Friends, if you're looking for real old school laughs, you're in for a treat because we've got them right here. Flip City Magazine. Remember Mad Magazine? Then it went woke? Well, don't worry. Flip City has no chance of going woke. That's right. Four times a year, you'll get an actual printed magazine full of jokes, stories, comics, and more, all about today's pop culture, entertainment, and woke politics. Flip City takes terrible entertainment trends we love to hate with hilarious parodies of Lord of the Rings, Stranger Things, The Walking Dead, Star Trek, Hunters, and more. Trust me when I say there is nothing else like Flip City on the market. So subscribe today. It will be delivered in print. Or you can even get it digitally if you're one of those wacky Zoomers. Either way, follow our link and sign up today. And if you put in midnight, you get an extra 10% off. Check out Flip City Magazine today. Good morning and welcome to the program. I'm Tom Connors. It is Monday. We have the boss man, Andre. How are you doing? Greetings, everyone. I am doing excellent. Uh, no St. Patrick's Day celebration for me, so I'm uh, waking a look and everything. I, on the other hand, did have uh, Irish Thanksgiving yesterday. Uh, that's where <laughs> your Irish, well, adjacent in this case, mother, will uh, make a bunch of corned beef. There you go. I'm having corned beef hangover. How's everybody else? Good. Six is six is here. Yeah, I my uh, St. Patrick's Day celebration consisted of me wearing green scrubs to work last night. So you wouldn't get pinched. And that's it. I get pinched anyway. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. People people lose their self control when they become a patient. It's annoying. Wow. But I love them anyway, and I take care of them, so it's okay. Well, Six is a grand old Irish name anyway. Yeah, and uh, you're coming through really hot there, Paul, for some Ooh. reason. Yeah. How about now? Am I less hot? Or not? Yes, yes. Now you are just uh, the right amount of hot. Okay. And, uh, just well, tell me how that. much hotness you want from me, and I'll deliver. Uh, that sounds about just the right amount of hotness <laughs> right there. <laughs> Uh, also joining us is uh, Cultured. How was your weekend? It was good. I was busy. I was, I was, I was put upon to do things. <laughs> there, I have many lists apparently. So yeah, no, it was a good time. And uh, yeah, we had St. St. Patty's Day yesterday. So I hope everybody was safe. Safe from what? Leprechauns? Wrap yeah. it up. That was it. That was well, it. That, I wasn't talking about that six but yes that's also great advice <laughs> fantastic advice there yeah well the the players golf was just a fantastic uh tourney that that was a great sunday conclusion if you're into golf really exciting the uh a guy lipped out a ball i've never seen before almost went all the way into the hole and then spun itself right back out everyone thought it was in that's not dramatic. the kind of it's not the kind of English you want in golf. No, no, I've never seen the ball go so far down into a hole, into the cup and then come back out again. Needless to say, the poor golfer was not happy. Sounds like some relationship problems. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's yeah. The, true. The old in and out. Kind of like a squeeze box. Yeah. No, no golfing fans on the panel here. Not at all. Mini I golf. Love I love golf, but I was busy. Oh, so. that's right. You you played golf in, in Disney World. I play golf regularly. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I love See, golf. we can I talk play. about golf and computers yeah. on whenever you invite me on your show for the digital I, I, digital I think, culture casino. I need I need we need I need, we definitely need to do our tech thing, but let's not bore the audience with no that. no. We're we're Personal. boring them already. We're losing them by the hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Well, we're actually gaining gaining a hundred in the last uh, two minutes here. So well, we're kind of smashed. We're, we're that kind light. of keeping it up. It'll be two golfers, one hole. Yeah. 
Oh, that is a terrible reference. Yeah. Um, okay. That's true. At anyway, work, Andre, what are we? Uh, yeah, what are, what we, are we doing? Today? Yeah. Uh, first of all, we are congratulating Nerd Rotted for having passed one million subscribers. Whoa. Oh yeah, well, look, yes. Really been oh, I can say this. Think the, the mainstream. I told him so when he was just a little itty bitty channel. A little yeah. itty bitty chin. Like, nah, thing. no, it'll never happen. Like, oh, when, shit. when he'll he be was the first doing guest appearances on After Dark, I said you'll be the first of us. He he was. I was correct. You were. So congratulations, Gary, on all your hard work. Uh, you deserve it. Yes, he does. And yeah. So uh, let's see what you guys are talking about out there. We got Montero. Who's been a member for 21 months? Thank you for that. Uh, we got Stone Racket sending in a pair of super stickers. One's a little black kitty, and the other one for five is a little Shiba dog. It says, I can't read it, it's so small. Uh, something one, I think number one. I think that's what it is. Well, well it's yeah, it's Shiba dog writing with a brush, writing number one on a piece of paper. That's, that'd be it. We're uh, number one. And mm -hmm. then speaking of members, we have Captain Phantom Nerd, who's been here for 32 months, and Sean the Movie Man, who's been here for 33. Uh, and then we've got Mark Spin of 117B, who says the lemon was squeezed and provided nothing. Well, we're going to get to that in a little bit, so hold that thought. Uh, but we have a little bit of box office news, or lack thereof box office, let's say, when it comes to the, uh, the magical film, uh, which culture saw. I did. Ooh. Oh. It was not extraordinary. Yeah, it was probably it's 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 not a good movie. It just isn't, and it 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 deservedly finished in ninth place, right down here. Well, with a title like that and everything, you would think that such a magical society that hits on all of the talking points that uh, that is being pushed from from the political line the media and everything that this would be a massive massive hit if the audience actually embraced it but uh, but opening to barely 1 million it would appear that this movie isn't quite in sync with uh, with audience sentiments wouldn't it yeah i mean you know 1.25 million it, that's not spectacular it opened in uh 1100 theaters so for something that they're calling a specialty movie or a boutique movie that's a wide release anything over a thousand so you're looking at just a very poor performance and you know from what mr chris gore is saying uh or has said this film which i guess is two years old now or more um didn't change much between the time it was released to film festivals and the time that we got to see it. And it could have benefited from some reshoots and some attempts at humor and things like that. But it, it, it performed about where, well, about where it deserved to. Let's say that. Yeah, I would say it performed even better than it deserved to. And they, they should be grateful for that kind of box office because this movie can't have been that expensive to begin with. I mean, it, it's not like it cost the marbles money or something to put this together. I mean, it's a it's a focus features film after all. So uh, how yeah, expensive was this? And not very. I mean, that's a Comcast company, Focus Features, and the it, it couldn't have been that terribly expensive. I haven't even bothered to look it up. I mean, the outside of David Allen Greer, there's nobody involved in this project that cost any money. Um, you know, despite the fact that Justice Smith was the the supposed wizard in the D and D movie that everybody ignored, um, you know, I I can't re recall seeing him in anything else, and he was fine in it. He just it wasn't. Um, it, he just he he just didn't have anything to act against. I, I I've I've decided that um a lot of these movies that are being made, uh, they're written by kindergartners. They just they they don't have any real writing behind them. I don't know, uh, Paul. What would you say to that? Well, Greer has got good comedy chops, but um and uh, someone had mentioned who had seen this and the key and peel sketch that the key and peel sketch was actually a bajillion times better funnier and more on point 
So, I mean, when I heard the title of the movie, I immediately, well, I thought I got it because there is a history of, of the white saviors, which I, I've always thought was funny. And, and so many cop sitcoms had a white lead and then, oh, the chief, black. <laughs> you know, so uh, you start going, well, you know what? Uh, this is getting tiresome. Uh, what's what's going on with this? So there's just there's actually real stuff to make fun of that everyone can understand. And it seems to me, based on you and what other people have said, that they've kind of ignored all the good stuff, all the low hanging fruit that would not have offended anybody. But they kind of went weird with it. So well, yeah. Considering David Allen Greer's in it, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. When a I funny was guy. To culture talking about it the other night. Yeah. I'm like, the problem with this movie is, is that from my understanding, it's loosely based on this rant that uh, Spike Lee went on a couple of years ago, where he was, he was. This is one of the few times he was half ass right about going off about Hollywood using the 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 magical black person trope, right? He was talking about the Green Mile and Legend of Banger Vance and a few other yeah. movies that were all coming out around this period. And, uh, you know, it was like the Black Savior film or whatever you want to call it. And he was right. He made a, he made a point about it. So that this movie feels like it's a comment on that. The problem is here, at least in my opinion, is the same problem we have with like the Lady Ballers movie and a few other things. I think it would have worked better as a skit. Right. Like a, like in Live on, Living Color would have ran with this years ago right and done an amazing skit about this very thing i just don't think it sustains a movie unless you're really running with the satire here and it sounds like from everything culture was saying they just didn't get the joke no i mean it, look there's three tom it, there were literally three laughs in this film and had they done what you suggest i think it would have been better but no i, I they literally used the legend of bagger bands and i would assume so yeah and 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 the and green, uh, green miles mile. even a major point yeah i was gonna say you were yeah. even talking about like that part yeah. yeah so it's all there but i don't know key and peel maybe even would have been a, a better choice perhaps i don't know well, yeah yeah and and for the life of me i haven't been been able to source an actual budget for this but it couldn't yeah. have cost the that key and neither peel, could the I. Peel thing was hilarious yeah it, it it was that was a great bit in fact i think a couple of videos uh, from people that put together their reviews for the film they, they actually included the skit clip it was great it, it reminded me of something that used to be funny i don't know just a waste of talent to waste uh david allen greer and i mean really if you want to be technical about it eddie murphy did the opposite of the skit 40 years ago and that's really all it was, was a short skit on SNL. And that's where he dressed up as a white dude to see what it was like to be a white person. And the whole skit is obviously nonsense. But that's the right. joke, right? All the black people, like in one scene, all the black people leave off the, 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 the subway. So another white guy goes, finally, they're all gone. And they turn on like polka music and start dancing. <laughs> Eddie Murphy's just sitting there looking around going, weird. You know, like, it's just a joke. You know, you could have had some fun with this, but. I don't know if you could do it now. I'm I'm not surprised this movie bombed as bad as it did. Even in a thousand theaters, I mean, it did very piss poor. Um, but it, it honestly though, I it 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 suffered from what I'm going to suspect a lot of a lot of modern films do, which is just terrible writing. It, they they did not take advantage of the fact that there were built-in jokes, Tom. That's the thing. It's like there's You know what this kind of reminds me of is Cocaine Bear a little bit. Yeah, but that was funny for at least that was reasons. still fun but yeah not as fun as it could have been this yeah. to me shouldn't even be a movie i guess was my initial point yeah. it's just a skit at best yeah i feel like i like i said i mean it, it if we had better writers which we don't um we would get better movies which we won't the only way we're going to get better movies if, if, if people like paul and script start getting jobs yeah well, well, it's a good thing of which that, I just uh, finished draft four of a script with, um, with script. So yeah, yeah. and speaking of, uh, we should be glad that script isn't here right now because that's why he isn't here. He's working. Well, that's good. Yes. Yay! So and we can yeah. talk about him. Well, and the like, Cabrini movie come in at number five, and that's a movie we actually were offered a screener for that we haven't seen yet. Um, I think Polly actually saw that in theaters, but. I don't know too much about it. But That's I the one it. from Angel Studios. Yeah, yes. I was going to say, I just noticed that it had popped in there at number five. Yep. So, you know, good for them. Another fairly 
So I doubt they spent that much on it. I like I said, I mean, I was after to screen it on that, and I didn't yeah, didn't yeah. take him up on it either. But it just I didn't really look like it was in our purview, like uh, the last one was. Yeah, but well, I mean, I, if, if Angel Studios is able to hit singles like this, thirteen million dollars for every exactly, film yeah. that they make, they're going to be really happy. Yeah, yeah because ball. their movies they don't cost thirteen million dollars to make. No, and the beauty of their movies is unlike some of the past, uh, what you call it. Uh, religious uh faith studios based. faith-based studios thank you that's a good name for them or that's what they generally call them these guys don't shove it down your throat right like it's not like it's outside of the god's not dead movies which was one of their first big hits if i remember right as far as i know like a lot of their stuff isn't necessarily like so you know blatantly direct, religious blatantly well, religious unlike I, except for a couple of things i mean i would then, even say that's a mischaracterization in that um, quote unquote, shoving it down someone's throat. That's a choice. The, the, there's no, you, you choose not to go to the film based on, uh, you know, however it is that they've, they've decided to construct it. So I don't right. think well, there's anything called shoving down anything, anybody's throat. That, I, that may be fair. But my point is, Paul is like, it used to be pretty obvious, right? You could sit there and watch, especially like, okay, Kirk, one of those Kirk Cameron movies that he put out like, 10 well, years I mean, ago. he's a moron. <laughs> That's my point is it used to be so obvious to where you can sit there and watch, um, um the shift for instance not knowing that it's a religious film not knowing that it's a, an updated telling retelling of you know the book of job or whatever and have no clue that it's like put sure. together by a religious studio that's my point well, same thing with sound of freedom you can watch that movie and outside of you know the god's children are not for sale line there's hardly anything else in that movie well, that goes, oh, this is a religious it, film. Of course, that wasn't made by them, but, but that still it, goes with my point. Well, one of the things that I had in my review with Pauly is that the mere fact that there was a person of faith in it made it uh, religious to the Hollywood set, which I find bizarre. Like, why can't you have a character that's religious? Now, uh, generally in Hollywood, the religious person is always the bad guy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> doing something horrible to young children. It's they they have this issue now. You know, a huge chunk of the United States, the world has has faith. I, I I'm not a I'm a faithless individual, but why wouldn't I have a character that comes from you know you know that uh, that perspective? As a writer, you're desperate to try to differentiate your characters, you know, and making them instantly uh, recognizable by the audience. Uh, and that's an entire group that you're choosing not to use just because, you know, you're, uh, you're crazy nut bars. That's, that just is so silly. They're not helping writers. <laughs> I don't think they're helping anyone. No. I mean, are, are there's Norwegian people of like, what's the dominant religion in Norway? Uh, Christianity. Christianity. And, and yes. you've met people of faith but the norwegians i'm sure approach it a little bit differently from americans right Nor norwegians are generally extremely agnostic i mean there's like this myth that norwegians are very religious and that's true in some very very limited areas like we have our own bible belt but in most of the country i mean sure. i've had pr i've had priests that will basically say that this stuff about jesus uh, Jesus dying on the cross and coming back three days. So you're, you're, not, you're not supposed to take any of that stuff literally. Right, but wouldn't that be... I have priests telling me that. No, so, but that's yeah. an interesting character. Yeah. Did you see my point? That there is such a variety within that group. As a writer, you're desperate to try to find somebody that instantly is recognizable on the screen because we're dealing with cliches, right? You've got an hour and a half to try to engage an audience you can't take an hour and a half to establish a character. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and part of the problem with these movies and maybe a culture, uh, uh, how established were the uh, characters in, um, in, in the movie you saw? Like, you know, were they interesting? Like no. right off the bat, how quickly were they established? Did you understand where they came from, where they were going? It was it you well actually just because it you, they this was the film was made with an eight year old in mind like an eight year old <laughs> can understand and it jumped around a lot of places it left a lot of things out it left a lot of things in like uh, conversations it was mostly like conversations about feelings either walking 
or sitting at a table or playing VR or right. sitting on a bench. So it it was really more that than it was, you know, anything else. They threw in familiar references to like their funny understanding of like Harry Potter. I mean, I'm not kidding. Like they stole like a pensieve, which was a lantern. They stole like a lot of these ideas from 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 Harry Potter that so the audience would, you know, make associations to things that they understood, but they didn't really flesh that out. Um, they made some very uh, offensive references to stuff that that uh, that could easily offend their audience, um, you know, about Monticello and things like that. Uh, they were, uh, it, like you said, it was there wasn't a character that you felt like you liked, right? So there wasn't. I mean, normally it doesn't matter what color a person is or even what sex they are. To me, I I can identify with you know good characters, right? It, so when you are like, I could identify with princess Leia. I thought she was amazing as a character that they didn't even bother. There was very little, no, there wasn't any character development. Um, and you didn't feel like you really knew or understood anything. So that's why there was such a lack hmm. of emotional impact for this, this, um, Barbie speech, believe it or not, that showed up at the end of the film. <laughs> um, that is given by the primary character, uh, Aaron, which is played by Justice Smith. And there was no weight to that speech. It, th th hmm. it, that speech would have had more weight had you made the editing choice to put that moment at the front of the film hmm. and then build your film from there to that moment and then beyond it, right? Because, I mean, we all, those are films that you can make work when you need that, that moment to make an impact. It just didn't. In fact, it landed kind of, flat there were only two lines in it that i thought were useful that landed with any emphasis that is something that you could understand but the, the they they didn't lead you to understand a point of view outside of this is the trope we're playing off of and you know if that makes sense i just you just didn't feel for any of these characters and i, I wonder what the pedigree of the writer of the screenplay was uh well he's a, a mixed race he's a white and Apple, black Apple. What? No, I, what I meant, like, what other projects has he worked on? But never mind. Appaloosa? That was funny. Actually. That's a horse. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I, I was a... They're black and white, six. Because yeah. he asked what breed. Yeah. Oh. Well, the pedigree. But no, honestly, it, it just, it, it, it just, it, it was weird. It was racist for the, for, it was utilized race, race baiting when trying to tell a complicated story. In, in other words, it wasn't Spike Lee. Let's just say it that way. Well, this this was this was not something good, unfortunately. Um, but hey, I mean, not a lot of people are going to go see it. Not a lot of people. I don't even know if Spike Lee would have made this. See, that's the thing is he would have probably been ten think, times worse. Think think about think about the one of the best movies ever made. Do the right thing. Right? And that's about his only real good movie. Sadly, yeah. that's the problem. But 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 I mean, if you want to make a social commentary about race at the time, at the time that that was made, it was still a little heavy handed because race relations were almost already not a problem anymore. Well, that was then. well when he did do the right thing. That was, if I remember right, right right around the same time or whatever is the LA riots. That was kind of what that was more about. Sure, sure. But it was also. But I mean, he's done this movie already, and that's what's sad. Yeah. It's called Bamboozled, oh. and people forgot about that one. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I think he did the movie. same kind of thing. It was not, but I think it did kind of the same thing, only better. It, it, it's not the exact same story. It's more about a minstrel show, but yeah. I think it made the race relation point what, a little bit better. In a way. What I find really sad is, despite the fact that nobody's seen this film, they're talking about it, and yet, yeah. unfortunately, the film that finished in third place, uh, Arthur the King, uh, the Mark Wahlberg picture, Nobody's That's one that, about. yeah, which is, which isn't great. I mean, that had a, that opened in 3000 theaters. It managed a seven and a half million dollar box office. And it's a film I wanted to see and was going to see yesterday until, um, uh, things conspired against me. Um, but, uh, I will be seeing that this week and I'll be doing a review on it because I desperately want to see it. Um, you know, it makes references to real events. I don't think there's a lot of real events involved in that. But I'll take a look at I'll take a look at the film and give my thoughts. So I, I like I said, oh. and then you know the other the other thing that really speaks to me is that Love Lies Bleeding finished in sixth place with two million dollars. 
And who's in that uh, one? Remind me. I know that's Kristen Stewart. Okay, uh, Kristen yeah. Stewart and that bodybuilder chick from season three of The Mandalorian and from Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. The bodybuilder chick in the in the quantum realm is like her and Kristen Stewart in a in a lesbian okay. lesbian adventure. Yeah. So it's a day that ends in Y. Yeah. We're we're not allowed okay. to say lesbians in Canada. We have to say traveling companions. Okay, fine. <laughs> LGBTQIA plus. How about that? Plus, what? since it's yeah. Canada, it begins with two S because you have a That's bunch of correct. people with two souls there. For some and, yeah, and but, and then yeah. you all and then you also need two to add in, and and you forgot about the land acknowledgments at the beginning of that. I, I apologize. <laughs> uh, well, don't apologize to us. It's like <laughs> we have to apologize for. I but, I love uh, making fun of Canada. So do I. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, and before anyone gives us hell, we all uh, make uh, make fun of uh, where we come from. Even I get much more frustrated because I yeah, don't even get me started. We'll see what you guys are talking about in the chat about the box office, actually. I see you got a few things here. But first, Stone hey! Racket, thank you so much for the 10 <laughs> gifted memberships. We appreciate that. In fact, I think uh, by next weekend, we should hopefully have another member stream uh, coming up. Uh, Olaf says uh, with a member chat, let's put this to good use. Can't wait till two weeks when DLS times sink again and my schedule matches up with you great guys on YouTube again. Yeah, for those who uh, in Europe are having the issues with the time changes, we apologize. Yeah, it's yeah. it is a pain in the ass to be yeah, uh, to be uh, to uh, to be like off for two weeks. I'm in Europe too, so so yeah, I have to move things around because to me, this all streams are suddenly an hour earlier those two weeks it's always good and fun yeah got to adjust um and then we got joe pat 87 who says look at king arthur's box office only 7.5 million kind of a shame yeah seeing seeing movie movies like that falter uh streaming has really done such a number maybe I, i've never heard, the, i've never heard of the film i was just gonna say what paul was kind of going towards there now i think the bigger problem was lionsgate didn't put any advertising into this movie. they put nothing behind it well that's uh that is the lionsgate way isn't it yeah all i know is there's a dog in it yes <laughs> and mark well, an, mark that's a plus it's an adventure bike race that they, they 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 have this dog that somehow magically shows up during the course of it to like encourage them on or show them another way or maybe maybe not. Some, maybe go fuck yourself okay now, I wonder if this is a Mark Wahlberg production. Probably. Because that's what he's working on these days. Um, well, uh, nobody else wants to hire him anymore, Paul. I mean, he's not the right kind of politics in Hollywood. Apparently, yep. Well, and he has another issue from his past, I guess, that is also causing him some issues with him getting was it insurance and stuff on certain things, culture. Is that or traveling? I can't remember which. I, yeah, I can't. I don't remember. I don't remember the ins and outs <laughs> yeah. of it, but yeah, there's something to do with something on his record from when he was a kid that uh, is causing. Like when he made that guy blind or something? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that uh, there, there's something. I can't remember the specifics, so I, I don't. I'm not going to get into it, but yeah, but no, yeah. Um, it's just too bad that Lionsgate get, didn't get behind it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Yeah. But again, that is the uh, the lion's gateway, and I guess some parts <laughs> of culture just don't let go. They are the ones I first started calling a bomb factory, and yeah. deservedly so. Callum Lyle sends in two Australian dollars. Says, "Have you watched Space King yet?" Uh, no, I have not. Has anybody else? Yes, here? I have. They I have. Uh, I have found it. I have found it, and I will watch it as soon as I have a moment yes. available. So I have it queued up here. I have found it, and I'm ready to see it. It is one crazy ride. I give the Let's guys talk about it on Wednesday because I should have. Seen I won't it say a word. Then. I yeah. won't say anything. And, and Callum, then I have moved it up to like a week and a half of where you recommended it. You should be honored by that because I never do mm. that. Like when people recommend me, it's easily six months between the time and I actually get around to it. So yeah, but since you are a loyal watcher and a loyal super chatter, I'll watch. Uh, move space king up the up the up the list so is yeah. that the adam sandler no no no, no, it's, no, a, no. it's a what's warcraft the... thing oh Not warcraft, warhammer warhammer what's the adam sandler one on netflix right now where well, that's another space thing but that's, oh, that's space man Never mind. Okay. yeah that's yes. space man yeah i, I watched uh the gentleman all right oh the I TV actually, show. 
I actually saw that pop up on my uh, thing, and um, I'm su- I'm going to try to watch Three Body Problem on Wednesday. So cool. Or Good Thursday. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I have been watching something else though, something else that's been on my list, namely, namely Foundation. I'm almost caught up with that. I'm sorry. No, no. Yeah, don't why be. would you do that to yourself? Because my initial reaction was one of absolute disgust. Mm. And then I got used to the idea that, okay, it's Asimov in name only, Asimov in name only, accept that, and now let's see what they do to it. Gotcha. Um, real quick, With, culture, yeah. out of curiosity. Oh, there it is. I just had to pull that off the screen. I knew Wonka would still be in the top films. Yeah. Holy that blows shit. my mind, man. I saw and it It's on weekend. streaming. Yeah, yeah, well, I actually have the, the Blu-ray here, the Steelbook here, but. I watched it this weekend, so I was curious where it was sitting. Yeah, 218, uh, 181. So globally, it's got good numbers at 628 million. I wouldn't say I liked it, but I didn't hate it. Yeah, it, it's it's weird because once it got to like be long in the tooth, it like really started to go nuts because there was nothing to compete yeah. with it. Look at this international I, numbers. And also, yeah. when people for for um, uh, the world, all adaptations right there, I didn't hate it. Honestly, should be on the poster for it because that is pretty growing <laughs> praise. All in all, for yeah. me, yes, because yeah, but... my wor- biggest complaint with it was the music. The music they should have found a better composer. Uh, there's too it... many songs, and they're just not very good. And it could have lost 15 minutes. Uh, the, oh, the relationship cool. between Wonka and the little girl was kind of confusing except for like it's like there's just little things i would have done like i was actually happy that they didn't dwell on his past so much because that was one of my biggest concerns was like if you take the mystery away from wonka that's what i hated about the tim burton one is like you had him create the factory out of revenge basically like in this one i think they should have just left the the past out of it because what little is there is unnecessary and i think it would have set things up for the future if you just had this idea that wonka just wanted to find friends because at the then it kind of makes you go well then why did he shut everybody out of his life later on and that kind of sets that whole idea up you know and i thought that would have been better but that's just nitpicking on that part the rest of the movie i thought was great hugh grant is the highlight as everybody said so otherwise yeah yeah, my only complaint was really the music and they should have made timothy blonde if they'd have made him blonde i think more people would have been going oh my god he's the spitting image of a young uh uh, you know gene wilder gene wilder yeah i Sure. I think that's a lot of praise from you. Um, I don't know what to do with that. Uh, I know, I right? Do, that's a lot for me. Yeah, but I do, I do know that this is doing what box office used to do. You have one third come from the States, you know, and I include Canada in the States because basically, you know, without us, you wouldn't exist as a country. <laughs> um, and then uh, and then you have the international box office, which is two thirds. You have one third from the States, two thirds international gives you your total. When you see a deviation from that, usually it means the film's going to do bad. And in this case, this is right where it needed to be. Those 70-some other markets really came through. Cool story, bro. All right. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, and I, I just see War Monkeys like, yeah, that's why the whole reason I never watched it is because I could care less about his backstory and agree it ruins his character. And you know what? And I said, it's a real small part of the movie and they could have just cut it out. Like it didn't even have to be there, but uh, it, it, it didn't bother me as much as I was figuring it was going. So yes, that is a glowing praise coming from me, even though it's like a mid-level movie at best. I didn't hate it. Okay. I watched Aquaman too as well. Oh, that, that just... was just like generic superhero movie with Amber Heard in it. Uh, are you hungry for bugs yet? No, no. And for giving over control to the WWF. Oh, I was just no. going to say, that's the other thing I noticed. I texted Andre about 22 minutes in. I'm like, I'm 22 minutes into this movie, and they've mentioned global warming no less than five fucking times. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Can I, can I, I, can, 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 go ahead. I just want to show you I was going to say, and that was one thing I knew they were going to head towards. But, oh, here we go. Madam Web. Where's that set? Not even, still ain't even made $50 million yet. Not domestically, internationally, fifty-three, and uh, worldwide, we're still under a hundred million. <laughs> stop watching this movie right it, away, so well, it doesn't get there. It did actually hit streaming this week too on uh, video. It did. On yeah. It did. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was like, "This is nuts." I, 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 I actually check on that one every day. Like, is it going to hit a hundred million? No. So, but yeah. Anyway. 
It yeah, is what no, it is. I think but, it's dead. But Dune and Kung Fu and Panda were like neck and neck this week. And in fact, these still aren't the final numbers because I've seen I've seen these numbers even tighter than what we've got right here. And I, well, we're kind, I'm kind of surprised how much uh, Dune has fallen off a bit. I mean, it's still 28 is nothing to sneeze at, and it's keeping mm -hmm. right up with Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. And it, I'm a little uh, surprised. And it has crossed 500 million yes. worldwide. Uh, culture is that a figure that you are impressed with? Should it have done more? Should it have done less by now? Considering how much it costs, and that they're already planning part three. To me, it seems like 500 is. Um, Maybe a little bit less than what they had hoped for because they keep talking about what a massive, massive hit it is. Some have even said that this is this generation's Lord of the Rings. Well, well it's that, already outgrossed the I'm original. So sure. Well, it's yeah. already outgrossed the original, Andre. I think that's the main thing. Yeah, that's yeah, the but the, uh, the original came out during uh, extraordinary times. Let's put it that way. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. Any, mo any money it makes over that, though, is kind of gravy i mean i was predicting it even higher at the end i don't think it's going to go nearly as high as i was predicting with culture yeah you were asked the question i'm sorry no we're, we're fine hey, you were saying what i was going to say this is disappointing i mean tom what do you remember what we guessed i was thinking it might come closer to like between eight and nine but i don't know Man. if it's going to settle there now i'm thinking more like six maybe closer to seven if we're and i don't remember what i guessed but i I think I said somewhere around like if someone remembers or if someone has to clip for where we made the six would be the one to remember and I don't know if she saw that yeah, show or, or action com action com might also action be com might too. that yeah I think you were somewhere within the I think you said it would make like something like 200 million more and that'd be about it or something like that I think I yeah no I think that I was like and it's gonna do like six seven hundred no more than yeah. seven hundred I think I said that I think that's I what said, I was thinking. I think I still was in that 750 range, if I remember right. But I'm sure we're way off, but yeah. And I yeah, I don't remember. But I do know this. I didn't I said it's not gonna make a billion. I know that for sure. I said yeah, definitely not snow. Yeah, that's and, one thing I do remember saying is I don't think it's gonna touch a billion. Yeah. And and I said it's too niche. Maybe I was right. I don't know, but I'm gonna owe somebody a pizza because they said it's not even gonna make seven hundred million. So, uh, and actually they're in the chat. So um, I, I think you're going to win that bet. But at $500 million it, it, over the course of the next, let's call it two weeks, which is really kind of the window this movie has for survival. Um, I well, don't that's know. That's a good question because upcoming this week, we're less than a couple days away from Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I know I'm going. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah, I may not do it. have a one week on PLF screens, so. Yeah, and I may not actually be doing a review on it. Why? Because I'm worried about it. Why wouldn't you review it? I don't know. I Because I don't want to review something that I that was really instrumental in my love of film. And Fair enough. But... Yell at it a bunch. <laughs> but, yeah, sorry. I just, it's going to... I haven't that... seen it yet. Yeah. Okay. I, d I didn't give a number for dune but in my yeah. review i said this is going to come in a lot lower than the studio wants it to come in oh yeah yeah that was a kind of a chicken a way to chicken out of a, a number but i i just didn't see it it's not it's a, a joyous experience though it's yeah it's, it's a, a it's you know but dune isn't a joyous experience either so no. i mean the book isn't it's it's it is what it is i think it's a fairly good um you know a fairly good rendition of the book with with the caveats that we have already covered right well and uh, it, it, the biggest problem that it's going to suffer from is its budget is uh, 190 million dollars right and i'm looking so. at ghostbusters pre-sales right now and they're not looking too good in my area uh-uh uh. yeah. yeah i, I, I just would not the... uh, be too excited for for the prospects of that one but we'll Oof. see yeah it's not looking too hot of course, I'm not getting, I don't have an IMAX screening near me. The IMAX must be sticking with Dune. My um, theater has five seats sold for the first showing. That's what I have. Oh, it's like six wow. or seven. I got six or seven. And then Friday night, the, the primetime showing only has four seats show, sold in the, in the premium theater. Not good. Not I think good I'm going to install my personal IMAX theater just so I don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> with your with your wealth, you I'm should almost have there, three Paul. or four of them. We should talk. I, I, I have a pretty good home theater. I got a big TV, but I'm sure it's not nearly as big as yours. 
I'm 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 sourcing IMAX theaters in my area. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm sad to see this, considering the popcorn buckets have been getting a little buzz, just like the uh, Dune ones, but I don't think that's going to translate into, into sales. But I just wanted to bring that up, since that's the big movie coming this week. Um, I've been kind of looking forward to it. But like you, Culture, I'm also a little worried uh, at some of the things. Yeah, yeah. People are um, looking for original stuff. You, you, yeah. I mean, again, Barbie, Oppenheimer, they're they're looking for things that don't have uh, an antecedent. But then again, you have Wonka's and you have a few other things, Paul. So, I mean, Dune Part 2 and, I mean, it's not like... They're not really movie. sequels. They're kind of reimagination, reimagining. Well, Dune Part uh, 2 is a direct sequel to Dune. I mean... Yeah, that's a sequel. Yeah, and I, it's not uh, doing as well as I thought I was hoping it was going to. And I think the problem with Dune is that everybody wants to see it on the IMAX. That's the only reason, I mean, honestly... It did well. Because I know a lot of people I've talked to, they're like, yeah, I got tickets for next week. Like, you know like it's the first time people are like no i'll wait till i can see it in imax so i think people are just waiting to see to get a decent seat in an imax basically um this is the problem with selling it as you have to see this in uh, in imax suddenly right. people might actually listen to you well in my in my local imax the closest one to me because there's four that i can get to easily there's only 28 seats sold for the first showing at the IMAX. Yeah. And then we got Godzilla over X Kong coming up the week after that. And I've had another person who saw it uh give me their review. Yeah. And another fairly positive to basically what you'd expect kind of review. Basically, from what I've been hearing, they know their audience. Uh the kids are gonna love it. So yeah. And and the kids at heart are gonna really love it too. So I'm a kid at heart when it comes to Godzilla. Yeah. What about Godzilla? I Godzuki? had a full spoiler breakdown, but no Godzuki. Well there's no Godzuki. We get we get Baby Kong. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> he's not he's, cute. I feel about Baby Kong the way I felt about um, Grogu when I first saw Grogu. I think it's going to get old real quick. What about Brogu? <laughs> Brogu. <laughs> Ew. Grogu's going to be. Nobody went there with me. That's okay. No, I know it's all right. Um, I think it, I think it'll be all right. I, I think it'll play just fine. I think it'll do a little bit better than Dune, maybe, but. Only what? because I think people will be fine. No, I, and the reason is, is because I think people will be fine seeing it in regular theaters. I don't think people are going to be as hopped up on seeing Kong versus Godzilla or Kong X Godzilla. Okay. As, so, as they were doing to see it and because they're going to so, want to take their kids. Man, so. This weekend's going to be weird. I just, it, anyway. Yeah, there's no, no Mothra. Mothra. Yeah. There was, she was supposed to be in it. She was supposed to be in it, but uh, yeah, it didn't work and out. Then... And then, but uh, yeah, and plus, Dune exactly. Dune two has zero appeal for kids, really. Unless, like, like maybe you're talking like ten, eleven, twelve, maybe. But uh, Godzilla, on the other hand, that's going to have all the kids wanting to go see it. And Tom, Kung Fu Panda. Tom, you said ahead. that you know somebody who saw Godzilla versus Kong. I know two people who've seen it. Now. Is there an end credit scene? Don't that say I don't that know. I, for, I forgot to ask. Okay. And I don't know if they would have seen it in the preview screenings. So, yeah. Yeah. Because okay. the person I, who the first person who said it, this was like, what, two, three months ago when I broke it down on After Dark? They had seen an earlier cut. And now they're actually screening the movie as is now. So I don't know. Now they should have out there pretty soon if there's a end credit scene, though. All the other ones have had yep. one. So I would assume this one might. So, in the interest of wrapping up our box office, yes, let's get past this. Um, I'm going to ask this question: Do you think Disney's re-release? I'm going to close this too. Do you think Disney's re-release of Luca is going to have any box office no. push in it next weekend? No. All right. I, I think yeah. it might do the better of the th of the three that they're released, but right. That's about it. Yeah. But the, so really, the only film that's really got any buzz this this weekend is Frozen Empire. And I'm afraid it's going to fall off fast. <sighs> I hope the movie's good and the buzz carries it, because that's the only chance it's really got. You know, Are there any screenings before Friday or Thursday? There's or just been the premiere screening where I think some of the critics have seen it already, but I haven't really seen much buzz about it, yeah. Because that's not a good sign that we don't haven't told anything, considering that the movie is out this week. And... Uh... I don't see any like major screenings or anything like that. There might be it, an so. embargo still on it till this week too. Uh, also, not promising. 
Well, that's not yeah. abnormal. Depends on when they lift the embargo. If it lifts like tomorrow or whatever, yeah. But if they don't lift it till fucking Thursday, then yeah, that's not a good sign. But Columbia has been behind this movie big time, right? Like Sony's been pushing, pushing, pushing. And that's where I wish they would have just pushed it to the summer because I think they'd had a better chance. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. They've got uh, a week to show us what they can do. Dr. Longdongler sends us a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up. You can do that. Uh, anybody can do that. It's free. Uh, and Seaman sends in $5. Says, it's sad that Cabrini isn't doing better. It's excellent. Wife and I loved it. Actually, I think it's doing pretty good. I'm sure it's doing um, at least fairly decent enough for what Angel Studio spends on their films. So. But we'll have to see how long it sticks around. The, the, the Angel Studio films tend to stick around a little bit. So. Maybe maybe I'll take a chance and check it out. I got a screener thing for it. So, Cyrano two nine six zero sends in a five dollars super chat. Says writing today is called instant gratification. No work. That's true. Yeah. Pilgrim Media sends in two dollars. Says I really love the Malcolm X movie Lee did. Oh yeah, yeah. There was that. He's got a couple. Of, he's got like a handful of good ones. But uh, yeah, I didn't mean to make it sound like that's his only good movie. <laughs> but I did say that basically. DCB Titan sends in two Canadian dollars. Says I thought it was fur traders. Ooh, hi. what kind of fur? Oh boy, it's just referring to. Teddy bear. Oh boo! Oh, Big Daddy MRI gifted ten whopping memberships. Holy crap! Holy, he's definitely a Big Daddy today. How you doing, Big Daddy MRI? Hi, Big Thank Daddy. You for swinging that wrench. Yes, indeed. Speaking of wrenches, we also have Neil, who's been here for twenty-one months. Thank you so much. Uh, our former lead mod on the uh, Facebook group. Paul M has been here for a month and says, happy Monday, all. I think I just broke my 1961. Oh, oh no. Oh, that sucks. Oh, no. Okay, was it a neck? Did it, was it the neck? <sighs> oh, he's going to go to the shop for repairs. I'm. Oh, no, 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 no. I hope it isn't something really bad that could have been prevented, man. I hope it was just a freak accident. And- oh, you can't. You don't have to blame yourself for it. But that's well, regardless tough. of what it was, I just hope it's fixable. Yeah, me too. Man. I mean, there's no point in crying over some built milk. Now you just have to try to fix it as much as you can. Yeah, that's too bad, brother. Sutton Creek Productions sends in a Supa sticker. What was it? Six. It's a thumbs up. It thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up, folks, if you haven't already. And then Action Com is here, sending in ten. It says the lemon says not paying someone for free work is censorship. Andre. Why are you sensing me and my time codes? And you say contract canceled. Remember, what? you can't fire a volunteer. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were paying him in praise. But that reminds me, I have to go back and I have to 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 glue them into the description. I uh, love your time codes. They help us so much. I would never, ever uh, cancel the contract with a, with a volunteer worker who who was better than, than any paid employee ever would be. So, uh, yeah, no. Uh, We're going to talk about uh, the Laman here in just a moment. Yeah. Kareen is in the house. How are you doing, Kareen? Sends in 999. It says, very racist era, late 90s, 80s, 90s, NYC. I'm in Brooklyn now. Do the right thing was taken place in Brooklyn. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Spike Lee has other, done other great movies, in my opinion. School Days, Crooklyn, and Malcolm X. Yeah, I apologize. Malcolm X. I should have. Yeah, Malcolm X. And I did you. like that one he did with the uh, the Klansman one, too. The ending, I think, was the worst part. But other than that, it was pretty good. Black Klansman? Yeah, I thought that was better than I expected it to be. He's had a few that were all right. Yeah, but do do the right do the right thing was, was a great film. I was trying film. to remember, though. Did that predate the riots, or was that? That's what I'm trying to remember. I think it did. Um, But anyway, yeah, no. and Because I was trying to remember, because th- that movie kind of predicted that was gonna, something like that could happen, yeah. Uh, but thank you, Kareen, and I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to make it sound like he's that bad. But anyway, I, I, I again said he probably would have handled this movie better. So at least I said that much. Pinochet's helicopter tour says Wahlberg has an assault on a tow truck driver in Massachusetts. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, uh, so this was when he was younger. There was some he was in a, a fight with a truck tow truck driver. He assaulted him. I think or was they robbing him or something like that? It was when he was a kid. That's all I remember. Or a young adult, let's say. Um, but I don't remember all the specifics. But yeah, it's getting in the way of him working, I guess, is what I've been hearing. Uh, Tommy Review sends in five and says, Hail Midnight's Edge managed to snag a ghost trap bucket from my local Regal. Well, awesome. Cool. I'm excited for Ghostbusters 4 and Godzilla X Kong. Also, watch my 4K copy of Super Mario Brothers. It's great. Yeah, um, 
I have some issues with it, but otherwise, overall, it was a really nice package and nice to finally have it uh, technically in the U.S. Uh, in a legal version, let's say. Uh, Patrick Robinson sends in 499 says the Puna versus real movie is set for 2025. Yeah. I heard they're doing more Winnie the Pooh horror films. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Oh, bother. Now I do have to eat piglet's face. Well, it does taste like bacon. Anyway, uh, thank you for that. And on that note, uh, we have a lemon to talk about, uh, and that lemon is Don Lemon. So bring me up to speed, Andre, and what the hell's going on here? Yeah, right. Uh, actually, we have Elon Musk to talk to you about because he's been on a roll, uh, basically smacking down both uh, Sweet Baby Inc. and Don Lemon. But let's begin with Don Lemon because, um, uh, Tom, I put a story behind the scenes here from the New York Post. Uh, where basically uh, it was revealed what he allegedly demanded. Team, Team Lemon have come out and denied that they wanted this, but uh, you know how the denials are. You can't always trust denials. But the background here is that just like Tucker Carlson, Don Lemon, once host of CNN, was to have his own show on Twitter. In fact, he's still going to. But apparently, he wanted some kind of deal wherein he would be paid an exclusive amount by X to host uh, his series there, beyond what any kind of creator would get to, uh, to, to host. And according to the New York Post, and I do believe that uh, that they have fairly good sources on this, he demanded uh, a Tesla Cybertruck, a five million dollar advance for eight million in total, an equity stake in X, meaning he wanted shares in X, and also he wanted a say in in X editorial and news policy so basically if this is accurate it sounded like he wanted to get in on editorializing for x in general and then he also had um, uh, elon musk on for an interview and after this interview which uh, which i think uh, elon musk detected detected some bad faith and that this was wasn't really lemon he wasn't bringing anything new to the table this was just cnn as it used to be on x so then whatever deal that they had going on before elon musk cancelled it and uh, after that don lemon is just an another independent content creator on x and on youtube and stuff like that but whatever kind of uh, agreement he was going to have with uh, with X and Elon Musk and Tucker Carlson has some kind of deal. We don't know what it is. Probably it was going to be similar. That he no longer has. And since then, more clips have come out of this interview that uh, that he did with Elon Musk. And I haven't seen the whole thing yet. I put a clip in it um, uh, also behind the scenes where you want to bring it up where uh, where basically lemon is pushing for dei in the medical field and musk is pushing back just so we can kind of like see where don don lemon stands here Tom, can you bring that up yeah i'm working on it yeah uh, this is it uh no uh that's the that's the uh, article where it was specified um a little bit further further down uh i give the description of it so it's uh, from 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 x well, it's a TikTok TikTok. One? yeah okay. yeah one. Right. sorry guys there we go i believe that it uh if if we if we lower the standards for what it takes to become a doctor, you're saying if we lower the standards, yes. but do you believe people are dying because the standards are being lowered? I I don't or have I think that lowered. is yes an issue, but it could become an issue. Okay, but the actual evidence in history shows the exact opposite. If you look at how minorities are treated by the medical system, oh, 
most doctors okay. most doctors now are white and there are lots of mistakes in medicine so you're saying that my doctors are have bad medical care i'm trying to understand your logic here when it comes to dei because there's no actual evidence of what you're saying no i i said so if the standards like if, like let's say uh I think that particular thing was referring to surgeons. Let's say a surgeon is, uh, is asked to, uh, a, <clears throat> a surgeon in training is asked to do a, a series of operations under the supervision of a senior surgeon, and they get a bunch of those operations wrong. If, 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 if that happens, and yet they are still approved to be a surgeon, the probability that someone will die, I think at some point is high. Okay, I understand that, but that's a hypothetical. That doesn't mean it's happening. I didn't say it's happening. You, said, you didn't say it was happening. I said, I said it will. You, but I said, if, 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 if we lower standards, people, people will die. <laughs> but why respond to something or put something out there that has not happened? Because I could say, you know. Because I don't want it to happen. I think we don't want to lower the lowest standards. Okay, if you look at the history of the medical industry, um, especially when it comes to black Americans, it shows the exact opposite. If you look at the Tuskegee experiment and on and on, only 5% of doctors are in America are black. All of them are white. So are you saying that if the majority of doctors are white, are you saying that, D and there are still these inequities, right? And there's, and people still, there's still mistakes. Are you blaming DEI for that? No, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very, very basically saying that if we lower standards uh, for what it takes to become uh, a board certified surgeon uh, or you know, an oncologist or something where, that, where the, the kind of disease we're talking about, if you make a mistake, causes someone to die, then the, the more people will die than if we don't lower the standards. Therefore, we should not lower the standards. But why do you think they're lowering the standards for minority doctors or women doctors or? That's what, the, 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 that's what that article said, that suggested, yes. <laughs> at, the, at Duke University. Okay. And that's exactly right. That's what DEI is and what it does. It is about lowering standards. It's about, okay, and I mean, this it's the, it's the tyranny and the racism of lower expectations, because that's what DEI does. It figures out, oh, the poor people of color and women and stuff like that, they're, they're just not as bright and they have it so <clears throat> difficult that they have to be subject to much lower standards. So... Yeah, they're just not going to be as properly trained. Then we let them out. And uh, what Elon Musk is saying here, if you do that, if you lower standards, eventually people are going to die because of it. And that's that, of course, is exactly right. But being a good ideologue and spokesman for the establishment, Don Lemon doesn't see it that way. Well, Don, Don, Don I just, just looked at the stats. Don Lemon is being utterly disingenuous, which I'm, I know is going to shock you. Yeah, and so he's yeah. focusing on one element and he's not addressing the elephant in the room is that how many people of any subgroup are actually interested in getting into the profession. It, he is intimating that the percentage of black doctors is indicative of exclusion or racism. That's, that's the thing he is actually trying to say without actually saying it. So he's an ass. So the stats are, <clears throat> uh, in the United States, among active physicians, 56.2% identified as white, 17.1% identify as Asian, and 58 identify as Hispanic, and five identify as black. So why are there more Hispanics? It's, it's really, so he is trying to say that black Physicians are being purposely left out of it, as opposed to saying it's a smaller percentage of group interested in getting into the profession, which I don't know either. I'm just I'm just saying that that would actually make more sense if you're going to make um, an assumption. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't you agree with that based on those stats? Why are there more Hispanic doctors than black if if somehow there's racism? Well, and, and then this is I don't know if this is related to it but i get what you're saying paul and i wonder also if there wasn't a false sense and this is going off of what don was saying i wonder if there wasn't a false sense of this idea that there was a bunch of diversity being injected into the medical industry and it was actually a, a net positive because we had a bunch of people come from other countries here 
get educated here. A lot of them stay here is what I've heard too. Right. And, and what, and it's pissing off the countries they're coming from because they're sending them over here to, and they're paying for their education and they turn around and decide to stay here instead of going back home. Well, but, but he's also, but, uh, the thing is, he's not I'm saying, talking is that about maybe like, uh, my, my, my point was this, maybe is that maybe that, uh, falsifyingly pushing the DEI number up into the positives than it would be had we didn't have that in there. I know it's maybe kind of a, a sidestep, but I wonder if that's maybe obfuscating the numbers a little bit is what I'm getting at. Does well, that well, make sense side, to the numbers a little bit? Sidestepping clinical DEI, which is letting in people of lower uh, scores into right. the system. Okay. Sidestepping that the point is, for him and people like him, which drives me nuts, it's that um, there's only one group that's important. Aren't Asians part of the diversity mix? mix? No, they're not anymore. Adjacent. No, no, yeah. but I'm I'm being sarcastic. But yes, no, I, mean, I know. Yeah, being, we're all being sarcastic, yeah. <laughs> and this is what drives me nuts. So clearly, Asians as a group are more interested in being doctors. This this is not indicative of of I don't believe. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a certain group being purposely blocked out of the profession. Are there not more doctors of Asian persuasion in the U.S. than white doctors? Especially anyway? if you count Indian, yes. Well, if if you're talking about my region here in Burlington, which is quite white, uh, almost every single doctor is either Arabic or South Asian. Yeah. I, Same thing around here. A lot of them are being more or less. Uh, yeah, sort of, I don't kind of see a lot of white I mean. doctors, and I don't care. And that was kind of where my me. question was coming from, because and that was what I was getting at. Doesn't matter Don, though, because he's a but racist. No. Well, yeah, that was my point, because I feel like he's using a false number to go by, right? He's saying, well, the diversity has worked well. I'm like, is that really true diversity, or is that all these, like I just said, all these other countries sending their best and brightest over here, and they're just deciding to stick around, and they're counted as a diversity quotient at the end of the day, even though they're actually good doctors but i get what you're saying the difference here is you're talking about actual but what it's what I, and that's what i think elon is saying is you're yes. taking possible false numbers and using that as logic to lead into this dei thing which is going to be you know like the the the, yeah. the, 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 the airplane industry is right now basically. don does not want to admit that a certain group of people are not interested like what's the mongolian percentage here like there's there's people who are interested in different kinds of jobs, right? I mean, at one point, oh, people, oh, there's not enough women in the uh, HR department. Well, in the 60s, it was pretty much all men. Now, it's pretty much all women. W w well, can we retrench that now? H how about we try to make it 50-50? No, no, I think we're okay with the way it is now. Well, uh, we'll keep it all women. I, I tell you what, Paul, we need to get back to a 50-50 split of On plumbers, everything. plumbers, sewer workers. You got it um you know uh, underwater welders um we need we need the the uh we need the people that work in the oil fields to be 50 percent women i have a feeling that uh you know we need to stop this bologna sausage whether it be about the difference in sex or the difference in race on these things you can look at it as a percentage of total per capita you can do all those things but it when it ultimately comes down to is people go into the industries they're interested in and that's it. Uh, and 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 somehow to Don, that's bad. That well, and sense. I had somebody who just messaged me in the background Don here, one of pledge. our regular listeners who happens to be uh, from South Africa. He says, actually, on the topic, um, I was told legislation here now have a massive problem where they lowered the standards, killed a bunch of people. We were re up standards and standards, and everyone either washed out or didn't bother to practice either due to cultural taboos or because women all went and had babies. So now we're facing two generations potentially, potentially of unqualified medical training oh due boy. to the pushing this DEI and university admission. And, and that's kind of sad because wasn't South Africa, one of the countries that was having a lot more uh, advancements as far as like a lot more doctors coming out of there. I thought too. That's a long that's time ago. I mean, yeah, the, yeah. and I, I think mean, that's so what South, he's saying here is, yeah, it's falling apart now. Yeah, yeah, my, South my, Africa, they have problems with their electricity grid and everything. My uh, one of my favorite videos is uh, a, a group of women were shown a uh, oil rig roughneck where the chains were just whipping around oh. the thing as he was pulling out the drill bits and putting them in and he's covered in oil and 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 dirt and mud and he's just working 
I, in a way that was utterly staggering. And they asked the women, do you want to do this? They went, no fucking way. It's like, there's just jobs that guys are going to do. And there's yeah. jobs that women are going to do. I mean, it's yeah. well, the medical stupid. industry usually has a lot more women in it. Actually, they, it, it is for now culture. for the, good. But, but, but universities but, are way over prescribed to women. Well, Okay, sure, but when it comes to when it comes to the medical field, I mean, there's there's biological. Oh, hey, oh wow, we're getting in trouble. There are reasons why that is because because women are more caring about people, men maybe less so. Let's just be let's just be fair. And now I'm going to get killed. <laughs> Listen, there there is uh, maybe not even in the recent past a lot of arrogant male surgeons. I've I've met them. They're yeah, I know. It's uh, part I, of the I part of the industry. Know. Is that yeah, a new I mean, thing? A male surgeon? I've never heard of that. Insurgent, it... male uh, insurgent. A, a male surgeon? Yeah. Okay. I was. Uh, uh, I I met an arrogant, uh, really, really arrogant male surgeon once. He he had like this, this era of, I'm the best knee surgeon in all of Europe and in the top five best knee surgeons in all the freaking world. Ooh. And it was quite okay because he fixed my knee. <laughs> you were like, it's all good, bro. Yeah, all good. You can be as arrogant as you want because uh, because uh, he fixed my knee to the point before an injury where you're not supposed to make a hundred percent recovery. I made a hundred percent recovery. Wow, that's good to hear. So then I was like, yeah, okay, you know what? Be as arrogant as you want. You can <laughs> belittle me. You can doctor a house. You can do whatever. But you fixed my knee, and you fixed my knee in a way that probably no one else in this country, maybe this continent, could have done. But it, so it's all good. You know what? It, but it, it, it's not fair to other surgeons and people wanna who want to learn from this individual. Um, a good friend of mine is an orthopedic surgeon here in Toronto, and she was treated <laughs> absolutely horrendously by uh you know the 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 senior male surgeons it's it's she almost didn't get the job anyway i want i don't want to get into it but it was horrific and i don't see what was the point in treating anyone badly what's the point in treating anyone badly <laughs> well i, tell you I didn't see that he treated anyone badly he was just like arrogant he was like yeah he had like that tony tony stark aura he, yeah. he reminded me of like the stock traders of the really really successful basically people top of the game who know they're the best and have reason to to be arrogant for it and i'm like yeah you know what you're gonna fix me and if i go to someone who's less arrogant i'll come away with 80 percent of what i was before whereas with you i'm gonna get to 100 and well i'm like yeah my, I, my I, employer I met, can pay that extra price i i did meet one unbelievably arrogant dermatologist who actually as same in your case helped me I, a bunch of students were floating around him. I had rosacea under my eyes for years and I had to put steroids on it to just keep it at a minimum. And this guy, this old guy walked into amongst all the students and he went, so what's causing his rosacea? And there, the students went off and all this stuff that, 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 they went wrong. How do you fix it? And how do you, how do you treat it? Da, 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 da. Wrong. It's not topical. It is antibiotics. And he just, you are, he said, you're all a bunch of stupid asses. And he left. Wow. And he was right. I got the, to take the antibiotics. <laughs> yeah, he and was a doctor was, house, basically. You need those people. Like, yeah, it's he was, very he was great. To complain, he cured my rosacea. When, when you don't need it. It's great to complain about nose behalf, but when you're the one needing it, I'll, yep. I'll take the doctor house treatment. I'm very happy for the staff to suffer that abuse, too. It's going to create a few more doctor houses <laughs> oh, out of it. Okay. I There's think that you'll no find reason. that a lot of a lot of doctors who have uh, coworkers, uh, nurses, um, PCAs, and other doctors who who don't give them a good review as far as a coworker, you'll find that their patient reviews skyrocket. So yeah. it's almost like there's this reverse really? correlation. Yeah, yeah, I can see because, that. And yeah. they'll they'll come into the room. They'll take care of the patient. Uh, they typically have um, either a student doctor with them or, or, or not typically, but often will have a nurse in there with them, a student doctor, something, and the whoever's with them, like acting like their assistant, 
they'll be the one to kind of grease the wheels and make everything nice. And the doctor will smile and, and they'll do they'll do their job in the most proficient way possible. And they're friendly and they ask the patient if they have any questions and then they shake their hand, they walk out and it's like a light switch. They turn right back into a dick. But when they're with the patient, <laughs> then, you know, they're doing, they're doing their job. They're caring for the, the person that's in front of them. But, um, yeah. you know, then they'll go, they'll go up to the desk to hand off some orders and then they're just a, yeah, but that's not nice poopy head. Oh. And I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't tolerate, I'm, I'm kind of a deadpan and I'll throw it back in their face, but in a very nice way. So I don't get fired. Um, but I just, I see that, that correlation between, um, arrogant asshole doctors and high, high patient five-star reviews. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I Interesting. No, I, I see that absolutely. But I can I understand that energy that. because it reminds me of the Andy Griffith episode where you had the couple that were always fighting with each other, but they were always nice to everybody else. So Andy yeah. tries to talk them into getting along. And as soon as they start getting along, they turn into jerks to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, just, well, you have that just stress. Just me of that, sorry. You have that stress in the job and you, you have, it has to come out somehow. Some, it'll come out on your family. Exactly, it'll come out yeah. on your coworkers or it'll come out on your patients. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's I mean, what I've seen. Interesting. But uh, yeah. Um, so yeah. D bar even says six is right. Some of my doctors are great with staff, but the patients love them. But e either way, I mean, that all aside, the whole Don Lemon thing, let's get back to that subject a little bit more. Yeah. So, so Andre, so you're telling me he was meant to have basically his own de facto channel on X, and he was supposedly contracted. Oh, he was or... gonna be he was gonna be the ultimate Tucker Carlson, and uh, now he's just a random content creator on X. And the main reason, well, I think it's two things. One is that he had all of these ridiculous demands, but I think the even bigger reason is this interview where he sh did show himself. To be a complete and total establishment chill, no independent thought of his own, no critical thought, just attacking Elon Musk for all of the standard establishment talking points. So basically, he was just going to be the old CNN continued in everything, pushing the fake news, pushing the accusations, nothing changed. So uh, Elon Musk shut him down, like he also did Sweet Baby Inc. Yes, we're going to get and get to here. But I'm curious, do you because now uh, Don Lemon he's going to be uh, an independent content creator the same way that we could be and anyone else. Do you think that he's going to draw masses of people? That people are going to be talking about him and Tucker. That the two will be competing neck in neck for views and popularity. What say you cultured? No. <laughs> I didn't even have to think about that. No. This he's got it, this is the problem, right? When when there's a level playing field, and in, in me, mainstream media there isn't because everybody's tipped over to one side. But when there's a level playing field, you are going to gather the most amount of people to what most people think. And most people think along the lines of Tucker Carlson. They don't believe in, you know, what the mainstream's in peddling. The, the mainstream has no influence any longer. Their influence is waning very quickly. And now the younger generations are starting to ignore the mainstream uh, more aggressively than even old guys like me. So you're going to see a, a very small following for him on this platform. I don't know how anybody could argue with that. Well, we do have an old guy on the panel, uh, one of those that, that uh, would have been used to watching the people like uh, Lemon for years and years and years and years. Maybe isn't new to used to all this my dad's here fancy social media stuff like that. They don't have a YouTube channel or anything. So... <laughs> Paul, oh, what say you? Well, my, do you think that? Yeah. My thought watching this and also reading about it was Don Lemon was showboating. I, I don't think there was any real substance in anything that, well, there was no substance in what he was saying. We took it apart already just now. Uh, but he was, I guess, the stuff that he learned at CNN and the dishonesty with which he managed his account at CNN, I think he thought he could out intellect um elon 
I, I think it was showboating. I, I think on, on some level, I thought that I got the feeling that uh, he was um, uh, bullfighting. And if he could defeat the bull per se, or or uh, not per se, but if, if you could defeat the Elon Musk bull, then Elon with, you know, the fact that he is such a, uh, you know, an ego driven person will be proud of me that I was able to handle handle him sort of, you know, like the, you know, when someone says, you know, kid, uh, you know, you're an okay, you're okay, you know, kind of thing. But I, he was, I, I don't, I think Elon realized that he was not the kind of intellect that he wanted. I mean, look, look at people on the left, like Gore Vidal. I don't know if any of you are speaking of old, uh, remember him arguing with, um, with uh, Buckley. I mean, those are fantastic debates. Those were two titans of intellectual, uh, 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 in intellectual debate skills, and and uh, Lemon is such a lightweight, unbelievable. So I, I mean, I, I thought, my my thought he was, you know, uh, my thought going in, not going in, but watching it was that Don was trying to score points and show Elon just, you know, he's going to be a great addition to his channel, but he wasn't. He was fought you know, a very poor battle. That's, that was my thought. I, I, I thought he was grandstanding. I think that, uh, that you are right about that, but you may be wrong about who he was trying to impress. Maybe he was trying to vie for another establishment job again. Maybe he was trying to impress someone in CNBC or something like that. Look at me. I'm taking on the evil yeah. Elon Musk. Give me a job. Yeah, well, but he, again, it's it's the thing where he doesn't want to look like a pussy in front of his boss, right? I mean, he's he's trying to be a professional uh uh douche. A, a pro <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> he was trying to be a professional um uh, uh you know, interlocutor, right? He's showing Elon that he made the right choice negotiating with Don for this position. But I think Elon said, "Wow, this this guy really doesn't have it that that's what happened in this well don, and then the demands don you the are those demands that he made real well we his agent has come out and denied that they're real but okay. uh, but that took several days uh and those demands didn't come out of the blue and it does kind of seem like in character for a former cnn host to do something like that so, so does, does don do have that know. much money this sacked is, away yeah this is this is why I, I i have been saying the whole time that he allegedly asked for this but in the days after that was revealed it was denied but it wasn't denied until the first working day after these allegations of what he demanded were made because that story broke on friday and there was no denial until monday today when it was issued to the to the trades uh that that's the kind of thing that i think would have been denied right away before that story spread uh, so personally, I think there's something to that he made those demands because that would be in character, yeah, especially, so. especially considering that to further what you were saying, he might not have been in this to get some kind of indie deal with, with Elon Musk at all. Maybe his game was to humiliate Musk and then be taken back by the establishment. So maybe he he demanded a deal that he uh, that he um, knew that Musk would resign. Hmm. I'm just speculating here. No, that's an interesting but, point. But, but consider, consider this. Consider yeah. this. If he were to join T Musk, if he were to be an uh, an independent developer on uh, uh, on X, but working with an agreement with Elon Musk, even if he still would be pushing the establishment narrative. He would still be working for and validating the enemy, so to say. Mm. He would undermining the CNNs and the CNBCs and the and even the Fox News and the ABC News because it would be sending the message: you're not needed anymore. You can come to X for Tucker Carlson, and if you want establishment news, you can come to that uh, for or come to X for that as well. 
because a lemon will be here and give it to you. No need to watch any of these other things. So it would ultimately depower the establishment if you were to engage in such an agreement. I, so I, I, I would I would imagine that uh, Lemon Pledge probably thought that he had the same kind of charisma and potential audience as Tucker. What? Uh, I don't know that he's that deluded, but uh, oh, yeah. we're about to find out. Let's put it that way. I think he thought that he was going to get respect from Musk based on the questions mm. that he was that he was asking. Yeah. He was putting he Elon did. Musk on the spot. He asked him about his ketamine use. And I thought that Elon he thought that Elon Musk was going to say, oh, that was, you know, that was a good, respectable interview. But from my perspective, and I watched the interview on like double speed, it seemed like Elon Musk was put off almost from the beginning that he thought that some of the questions and the way that he was taking what Elon Musk was saying and then reiterating it back to him was nonsensical. Yeah, um, I'm not surprised. With, with the yeah. You know why? I think that he would be like standoffish from the beginning because before the cameras roll, they're obviously going to have like a, a brief chat behind the scenes, right? Just like we do before we go live here and everything, they're going to do that as well. I think that he's going to knew right away, like, this is a bad faith interview. That's why it's going to be standoffish uh, uh, from the very beginning. Yeah, even when he said that, you know, you asked for the interview and I'm here. I'm, you know, we're doing it. It's, yeah. it wasn't like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm happy to talk to you, happy to, you know, answer your questions and help promote your, you know, you coming on doing this partnership with X. And, but, but think about the exposure as far as Don Lemon's uh, YouTube channel succeeding now that he's off of X or not going to be on X. If he continues to do interviews like this, I mean, how many people clicked on that just because he was being a jackass to Elon Musk? If he continues yeah. to have people on and he's a net jackass to them, he's going to continue to get the clicks. He got my click. I didn't sub to him, but I watched it. No, that's a good point, too. And I, I it makes me wonder because, like, I mean, Elon, I think you guys are probably right. He was probably bamboozled into this whole thing thinking it was going to be one thing. And then when he got on the set, realized this is not what i signed up for and yeah i mean it's it happens all the time because that would be like us inviting on uh, you know somebody to talk to and they're like look i just don't want to talk about this thing and then the first thing you ask them is oh well about this thing and when you got them yeah, on the spot exactly. like what are they supposed yeah. to do right like and then yeah. and i'm sure that'll set the whole thing off on a, on a bad note right it, that yeah. or it, just beforehand he was like well i'm not really sure i want to get into that business or I, you know and he just did it. I'm not saying that was what happened. I'm just giving an example, but yeah. Something along those lines is what I'm assuming. Yeah, he yeah, told no, Don, Don to go fund himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't really learn much about Elon Musk in that interview, but we learned a little bit about... Um, That's a good point. Lemon. I think he thought he was going to get a gotcha interview, d yep. Yeah, but I don't think he did in the end. It's... But I see where six is coming from too. It's like the whole, you know, no bad such thing as bad press thing, right? You're right. You clicked on it. Yeah. Regardless, you clicked on it. It, it at the end of the day, and well, he's we clicked on it on because it. of Elon. But right, and if he continues to have people on that are are going to have the same, I don't want to say controversial, but um, provocative, or... provocative interviews, then he's going to, you know, he could he could make a channel that way. But are people going to continue wanting to? Are are the left going to start wanting to come on his show now that he, now that Elon's kind of? I'm sure that some back. people, some people would. Those that I'm mean, sure he can get Robert De Niro any day. I'm sure that he can <laughs> uh, he can get exactly. uh, Mark Ruffalo any day. Like all the people who are completely deluded, completely deranged suffering the worst cases of TTS. Like, again, I already mentioned Robert Anito, who thinks himself such a brave fighter for freedom that uh, that the orange man personally is going to come and hunt him down and put him in chains when he's selected. He's going to get people like that on, for sure, who think that, yeah, this is going to bring them clout and everything. Yeah. But is he going to get any viewers who aren't already on that side? Is he going to win over any hearts and minds or is he going to just harden people all the more for the other side for the tucker carlson side i think that's what's going to likely to happen there i agree with you there andre because that makes complete sense right like because 
you're right. He can get De Niro all day long. He could get Ruffalo all day long. He could get any one of these guys all day long. And you're right. The only people we're not going to click on that. None of us would click on that. Uh, so that means a good majority of people or a good portion of people just don't aren't going to tune in or care. But you bring on Elon Musk or somebody like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're going to click on it. You're going to have a lot more people clicking on that than had you not before. And I can see exactly where Andre and Six are coming from in this. And sure, Davina said it in the chat. Bad faith interviews are, you know, one shots. But how many of these one shots does he need to get back into the good graces of, you know, the people that are on the other side and whatnot? Because that's the other thing, too, We got like you guys were bringing up and alluding to. I mean, he's not exactly in the best of shape right now. I mean, with all the shit with his brother and all that stuff. But, yeah. Well, we all have our crosses to bear. It, it just one last note for this. And, and, and we'll let it move into the next phase, is that the average age of a linear television viewer, spe- specifically for broadcast television news, is 55 years or older. <laughs> so they're ignoring Don Lemon, or were anyway. I mean, the younger folks, they're not going to pay more attention to him now because he's, you know, over on X or YouTube or anywhere no. else. He's just so sanctimonious. As crazy yes. as Tucker Carlson is sometimes to watch. And and uh it's just a different experience. Don like I, I don't know what Don is gonna be doing for a living. I you know, to me when he I hate to say this, when he arrived at CNN, I thought he was a DEI hire. He was. Because he's mean, a twofer. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, what's the name of this other guy as uh, uh, at CEN? The I forget his name right now. Help me out here. Harry the guy who comments on elections on everything. Other black guy. Oh, I don't watch CNN, so I don't... help me out here. Someone <laughs> in the chat. I, I I couldn't even begin to tell a you. There's black, a guy. A res- uh, is a there black a respect- dude from CNN. Yeah, like he's not a regular host, but he comes on one of the. A frequently appearing talking heads always comes on talking about election and analysis mm. and election numbers and stuff like that. Wow, I'm looking at this. There's a lot of white folk on CNN. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got Larry Madawo, and I have no idea who he is. Victor Black Blackwell. There's not Vernon Jones. I, I checked that. Uh... Mm-hmm. Van Jones. Van Jones. That's the one. Van, Van Jones. Jones. Okay. Uh, Van, Van Jones, Jones. Yes. He admitted himself that he was a diversity hire. He was hired okay. because he was black, and he admitted this. Yeah. I don't mind Van Jones. Yeah, and I don't Van care if, if on a TV show if somebody, well, I care, but the, the difference between caring about somebody's hired because of their diversity hire on a TV show is a lot different than caring if they're hired uh, and they're going to be my surgeon. Which yeah, but that, to... it, but that's the slippery slope we're headed down, I think, is the whole point we're getting to here. And we tried, you know, saying this years ago, too. And you're 100% right, Six. Yeah, it's a big difference. Big, big difference. But we got planes falling out of the fucking sky. Right? Yeah. Like... <laughs> I'm nervous about coming to America. I have to take a freaking boat. Well, it, it, you know, that's a really good movie, though. You sure you want to do that? I don't know. I want to check in. Say the history of boats isn't the best either. <laughs> maybe we should go back and see how how that lines up with DEI crap. Maybe. Yeah, but but planes aren't falling out of the sky right now. No, just, uh, <laughs> you might wind you know, up on a cruise that ends up getting stuck in some. <laughs> well, except in Malaysia. I I actually uh, actually had a uh, in the six minute uh, daily this morning, and there was another Boeing uh, plane that had a panel missing on a flight between oh, Oregon. Oregon and California. Boeing's and this not makes me not time. want to fly too. Like well, I was serious about like maybe I should just drive. Well, let me <laughs> just go to check out the uh, the web pages because I've done that for all of these airplanes where where like pieces are just falling. The planes are just falling apart in a way that they didn't to before. Well, all of them they have these big graphs where they brag about how far they have come in their DEI measures and everything like that. So yeah. Neon Wasn't Knights the got pilot a woman? A boat. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, on that point, the competition bureau should bureau should never have let McDonnell Douglas uh, buy Boeing. Yeah, I agree with you. 
That's that, it, well. That I mean, the downfall of 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 success in America is whenever we allow for mergers to happen. Well, what especially do you expect if you Asia. let a clown run your? Oh, you said oh, not McDonald's. Not though. McDonald's. McDonald Douglas. Yeah, oh. but rewinding this conversation, here's a worse story. So Boeing is now warning uh, the people who have their planes that they need to check the pilot seats oh, Jesus because Christ. oh yeah. Because they had a, a plane actually plunge like thousands of feet because of a, a loose pilot seat. What? I'm not kidding. Wow. Those How the hell does that happen? I mean, I don't know. Those were two stories this morning. <laughs> I know it's been yeah, a lot, lot coming out of the um, Boeing after they adopted the EI on their assembly line. I, I'm yeah. McDonald Douglas was what the killer is a Boeing. Boeing, not Boeing. Boeing. Boing. Boing. McDonald Douglas has the worst management, and they were allowed to buy Boeing, which had some of the best. Boing. And and just to be clear, I'm not afraid of flying anything with female pilots, pilots of color, anything like that. I've done both before. It's been awesome. But before, I could trust that they were qualified. I can't trust that anymore. Mm -hmm. Harrison Ford's more qualified, it sounds like. No. At least if you crash with him, chances are you'll survive. I love hey, flying on. KLM. Something will be broken. No, he just gets out and goes, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you put him on a set, he has more of a chance of dying than he does in a plane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, let's not forget the story about the Boeing whistleblower we're going to talk about here, but who basically went out and said that if something happens to me, it wasn't me. It was done to me. And then, oh, Jesus. Yeah, and then, then he, uh, he self-deleted, apparently. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. Good times. Uh, but moving on, uh, because on, on a happier and note, we're Elon Musk, yeah. uh, he didn't just take on uh, Don Lemon, which is fun and well. He also called uh, out Sweet Baby Inc., calling them basically a blight on gaming and that he hopes the company is going to go under. That's a very nice signal boost right there, wouldn't it, don't you think? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's on his radar now. Well, it, it and Alyssa Milano noticed that and had a little melty. That was fun. Yeah, do share. Can you bring that up on screen? What oh, did I, Mr. Milano say and do? I, oh, yeah, now I've got to look for it. Because there's nobody I care more about its opinion than a Melissa Milano. Hey, you know, back in the time in my formative years. Um, I didn't care about her Oh, opinion that's then the either. one in Charmed, not the uh, soap opera. Who am I thinking of? I couldn't answer that question. Uh, Is the okay. Charm a soap opera? Kind no. Of. Charmed was a, no, was like a witch. that show with the three women who were witches. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, I keep like mixing her with that bitch in Beverly Hills 903456, whatever. Not oh. Shannon Doherty, right? Or oh, no, yeah, no, 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 not her. That's the one I keep on thinking about. Yeah, you guys put me on the spot. Now I got to go find this. She tweet. was in Charles in Charge, wasn't she? Charles in Charge? What show was she on? Nicole Eggert. Is that who you're thinking of, Paul? Now we're just throwing names out. No, I don't know. So Alyssa is uh, defending Sweet Baby, Inc. She just noticed Elon's tweet. Oh, I see. And I and I, I have it somewhere. Like, give me a minute. This you guys wasn't wasn't oh, who's she the, the boss? one That's that, the one uh, that yeah. helped yes. Biden end the Me Too movement as well. The moment that she basically said that no, 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 no that no, was no. Rose Roush McGowan. That's that Rose was Rose McGowan. McGowan? Okay, yeah, I yeah, think sorry you're thinking of. Yeah. Okay. The other crazy one that lost her hair, but she well, shaved uh, it off. Alyssa Milano was the one that was wearing the crocheted mask, you know. <laughs> no, the... Alyssa was the one out there going, look what COVID is doing to us. And she was brushing her hair and she's like, it's making my hair fall out. Uh, no, your your brush was, lady. Um, and her stress levels. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, her yeah. stress level. Yeah, that's She, she was, was probably watching too much Don Lemon. But and Rose McGowan was also. Him. Yeah, but Rose McGowan was also on Charmed, yes. Yeah. And she was supposed to be Red Sonia at one point. Yes, she was. And I believe that's why she was in the Conan movie, because the Red Sonia thing never happened, right? Yes. She actually well, wasn't I'm, still in that. I'm still looking for the tweet, guys, so I apologize. Good for you. So yeah. we need to vamp. 
while he's this is called vamping, gentlemen. Yeah, but it, 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 let's see what Paul, we got for super uh, chats. Yeah, and there you yeah, go. Well, I was going to say, Paul can vamp about uh, the impact of Elon Musk trash talking Sweet Baby Yank. Who had seen that coming two weeks ago? No, I and, and the thing is, the things that he finds interesting are always fascinating just in of themselves because often they're not mainstream. And and also the gap between his interest, his wealth, suddenly he'll pick up on something like this and you go, what? Huh? Why? You, oh, my God, he's a gamer. Maybe, maybe he is uh, trying to prevent uh, Gamergate, too. You know, well, we you, see the media is really trying to push Gamergate to yeah. Oh, yeah. Need it. Here. especially the game like the the mainstream game news outlets need it. And and I heard after I had done my Canadian report on supporting <clears throat> uh, research on uh, degenerate gamers, someone pointed out to me that the Homeland Security is doing the same thing in your neck of the woods there, uh, Tom. Are they? Yeah, apparently they've got a whole, the the, the uh, Biden administration is, is now suddenly instituted some kind of program to investigate the same thing that the Canadian government is doing. Like, what a waste of money. Hmm. unbelievable they know how to waste money they that they do and guess whose money it is oh Fine. gee i don't think they're quite aware of whose money they're oh they're, they're well spending. aware paul they're well aware but they don't care <laughs> they love the their purse that's the point <laughs> or like danny devito as he puts it in the movie i don't you like my money i like other people's money <laughs> uh, speaking of danny devito uh, this is a side thing. Would they make Throw Mama from the Train today? today? Would, that, would that be a movie that would be allowed? Yeah, it's to okay because she's white. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> and they can barely understand her. Okay, that's fine. That was she's a funny white. movie. She's an old white woman. Yeah, <laughs> Billy Crystal and Danny DeVito. That was a funny movie. I had a I had a friend whose mother was like that, and anytime he got into the passing lane, uh, uh, in his uh, souped up Celica. She'd be screaming at him. Hey, don't, don't drive in this lane. We're right next to a truck. And I'm I'm in the back seat listening to his mother just screaming at her son. And I knew her son was mad at her, so he would purposely go into the passing lane and go as fast <laughs> as he could. So she was just screaming the entire time like this. Get out of the lane! What are you doing? Oh, you're gonna <laughs> kill me! We're gonna hit that truck! And I had to listen to this the entire time, like for a like a twenty minute ride. What anyway. a what a nice mother son relationship. Uh, that, that, yeah, they would still let you make that because it's about destroying the the nuclear family, right? Because the whole thing he's he wants oh, to kill his true. mother. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah. You're anyway, right. Tommy reviews. Let's get into some of these. While did you find that yet, Culture? Are you still looking? Mm, still looking. Okay. Well, well, let's do some super chats while you're looking. Tommy reviews. We're vamping. Sends in two dollars. Says Spike Lee remade Old Boyle, an awful re movie and remake. Yeah, I did not see that. I don't know if anybody else here did either. Uh, Gladiator Woo! sends in 35 South African rands. So speaking of lemons, Acolyte trailer tomorrow. That's right. And congratulations, Gary, on Nerd One Nerd Roddick on 1 million subs. Yeah, Indeed. he gets a new plaque. plaque. Yeah. that That's quite the accomplishment. It is. $5 from the Mexican Iron Man himself. Mikey in the house says Don Lemon. Mexican Iron Man. Equals society of non-magical but definitely delusional <laughs> N-words. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Robert, I didn't though. I'm I'm trying to keep the the monetization on today. Robert sends in two dollars. Says Tom, you were right about nerdrotic. Play the clip. Oh, I should have had it ready. Uh, I just gotta go. I knew it. it is. I fucking knew it. Oh. No, in all seriousness though, like it was back in the day. I met Gary. Uh, when they still had like three or five thousand subscribers on there, he'd bring me on once while I'd he'd come on after dark and the main channel here from time to time when we finally fired up live. And yeah, I remember telling him early on, you're going to get, you're going to be the first one to hit a million. Cause I said it to him. like, you have that thing, right? It, what, what Paul likes to call the magic jelly. Yep. He does. Yeah. So. And, and he's good and he works hard. Yes. And then Chad St. John sends in five and says, anybody else notice they edited Elon's nodding to make it look like he was acknowledging what Don was saying at the time. Yeah. They'd like to do that too. In, in interviews. Who was the guy recently who was that Trump who released that whole interview because he wanted to make sure that 
people saw the whole thing in the unedited version or who was that I no, you're talking about uh, Elon Musk's interview with uh, with the BBC. Yeah. Yeah. Elon the himself who did that before, things. yeah. Yeah, it was one of the very first things that he uh, that he did uh, when he took over X. He had the BBC come and interview him on on I forget the name of it, but like this live thing on on X, and that was specifically so he couldn't be edited, taken out of context, and that's ba basically where he confronted. Uh, the BBC reporter with the massive amounts of disinformation peddled by the by the BBC, and when he even basically stated that, "Oh, you thought that you were interviewing me? Well, I'm interviewing you as well." Yeah, That's that was a great, great title. Great piece. Yeah. What was with Elon's uh, face? He, he looked like he was breaking out. He didn't. He didn't look that good. In the one with Lemon. With lemon, yeah. No, I think that he realized right away. Shit, this is like this is bad faith, and he's trying to go for nothing but gotcha things the whole time. But the but skin he condition, he he did not look healthy. <laughs> did not Maybe look he didn't well. have his makeup person that morning. Maybe. Yeah, we don't know. We ho hope he's uh, fit and fit and healthy. Yeah. Okay, well, this is seemingly gone from my timeline, and I haven't been able to source it from hers. Maybe she. So. Maybe, Maybe she, she deleted, deleted it. it. Uh, crap. That's what I was thinking. Andre and that, I were on the same page there. <laughs> makes me mad. I, I should What She probably got bombarded by gamers. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, look, I've acknowledged it for the past week here. That is oh, one man. group that can make a change like that. Well, they deleted a bunch of crap from their website. The sweet baby folks. They like they were like calling the crap out of that man. If you well, didn't grab good it, thing that we documented it before they did, so we can yeah. so everyone can see all the madness on it in our earlier videos. That might be a good follow up. How they try to to alter reality by changing their website, trying to deny what it is that they do, trying to make it sound like oh no no, we're just doing consulting. We're not doing anything story wise to the games, even though we totally said we do on our webpage. Yeah. It's yeah. it's insane. We've been we've been we've been living in a bunch of insanity for quite some time now. Yeah. And uh Chad uh, St. John or is it St. John? Uh says for uh, for $5. Anybody else notice they edited Elon's nod then to Yeah, I re we read that one. Acknowledging yeah. what they were saying at the time. I would not put it past them. Would not put it past. That's what them got me to the one where I was trying to remember where he and you said it was him. I didn't I couldn't remember who it was that released the other side of the interview. Yeah. 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 Uh, Sean Carter's been here for 29 months as Lemon Logic. We have no proof that taking the brakes off a car will result in more death. So why not try it? <laughs> right. That's a good analogy. Angela Richter's in the house, a huge supporter. Thank you so much for the $10. Says they are setting up people for failure. You can't cut med school or post grad work unless you are prepared to succeed on your merit and not your skin color or who you sleep with. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Problem is they're setting up other people for failure too, namely the people that rely on those people to be able to do to do their job competently. Yeah. And uh we got DS Ford who sends in ten dollars, says I worked at a medical school for twelve years. The majority of students were Asian, last name Patal or Singh. Uh we enroll in, and that's what I was saying, yeah. <laughs> we enroll in students solely based on ability. Race had zero to do with it. Don Lemon is a clown. Yeah. There you go. It, Duck Vader sends in five and says, with SJWs complaining what, that minorities are underrepresented, in what way are minorities being hindered from becoming doctors? Who's gatekeeping? Exactly. And this is the same thing with what bothered me about the entertainment side of things getting into. It's like, in what world were you not already diverse as fuck? Sports, same thing, right? Like, the cream always rise to the top. If you were good, people wanted to see you, people wanted to watch you play ball, that you... You got paid. <laughs> there, there, there are there are moments such as, and I, and I think you'll agree with me, uh, the longest time uh, in the NFL, so few managers, uh, coaches, and staff w were black considering True. such a shit ton of the players were. That was an obvious inequitability. Yeah. Well, and the same thing in was like. <laughs> Did I yeah, just make up a word? Well, we're talking how many years ago now, Paul? No, That's no, my no. Point. But uh, I think things need to be nudged in the right direction, not institutionalized in the right direction. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. And I, I, I mean, think yeah, that's you, the problem. 
you can go back 40 years and even MTV took a while to come around to things, but once oh, they yeah. couldn't deny Michael Jackson and Prince anymore, it was correct. All, all debts were off then. Right. Like that's the point is sooner or later they can't deny it. And it just, it just happens naturally one way or and, another. And you're right. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. And that's why I said what I said about Spike Lee. You know, it's like, you know, this is a guy that brought out a whole lot of arguments against racism and who's your favorite music artist? Who's your favorite sports player? Who's all of this? It, like you said, we'd been burying these problems and now they're intentionally bringing these problems back. This didn't, gosh, I don't want to point to a particular occupant of the Oval Office, but we all of a sudden had this new awareness in this country that we needed to have another demon to fight. That wasn't the demon we needed to fight. We needed to fight, you know, uh, becoming complacent and, uh, you know, resting on our laurels and everything else. We needed to fight the the demon of, you know, the corporatism that was taking place in this country and the mergers and acquisitions that were providing less competition. It, I feel like we've seen this before in this country where we had to develop stronger antitrust laws with the Sherman Act and things like that to get rid of... Um, a lot of these problems, but we then al allowed for politicians mm -hmm. because of lobbying to create a situation where we, we, we had much less awareness of that. So we need to fight the right boogeyman. So everybody rises and not the wrong ones. We exactly. should have let Sherman stay with Mr. Peabody. That's right. That is a terribly long way to go for a very bad joke. Sorry. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> you know, Shay's helicopter tour sends in uh, $2 and says, uh, you seen Minnesota students Med students casually, or where do I get casually from? Chanting their oath. Uh, no, I have not seen the Minnesota medical students chanting their oath. I kind um, of have a hint. This probably isn't the regular and uh, Hippocratian oath. That's, that's what I was thinking. Else. Yeah. Something not good. And considering Minnesota is one of the hubs of uh, medical schools and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oof. I haven't uh, seen we it, are yeah. unfortunately uh, losing Mr. Chato oh. here, though. All right, let's see what uh, we got for Paul. Anything for Paul yeah. specifically? Yes, we, we do go. have one. Uh, a tipping bond says for a dollar ninety nine. You heard it here first. Chato is juiced. Just we knew it. Must. We knew it. <laughs> we knew that was coming. There's, that that can mean Swallow. multiple things. Swowl, swowl. That's right. Swallow. Swallow. I have never taken. Uh, well, those are topical steroids, if that's what he's referring to. They were not, uh, and Small. that damn thing it would only that probably work. Probably is what he's then... referring to. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, the and the problem with steroids is that it thins out your skin over time. So, all the doctors I ever went to just prescribed steroids, and there was this one, one guy said, "No, nope, it's internal antibiotics," and it's been gone for the rest of my life. So, see. Yeah. There you go. Mean, mean old doctor. He was I like he knew doctor. his shit. There I like go. doctors who know their shit. Yeah. yeah, I think that's that's a good idea. And then we got Fluffy Panda here who sends in two dollars. Says, Is it true that Sweet Baby Inc. is Paul's stage name? Yes. That's <laughs> that's now, uh, coming to the stage. Sweet baby ink. I'm not gonna take my top off. I got again. the I got the pictures. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I'll put a poll in him. <laughs> what? Oh, he's got a picture of him just like dancing yeah, in his underwear. Yeah, I'll just put a poll okay. in the picture. Backstage, yes, backstage. I I sent the secret picture to Tom. Now now uh, now I have I only to use stay it when this. it's necessary. I, I have to uh, stay on this damn panel now, or he's going to blackmail me with the picture. Now is Which this is weird because I've already this, used it like three times. So I don't is this the whole about. DeMeo picture? <laughs> Kind uh, of. Well, yeah, my version of it. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> it, only the stereotype for white guys totally lives up with Paul. That's yeah, yeah. I I dig it. So listen, thank you very much for having thank me. Thank you, Paul. And uh, hopefully we'll see you Wednesday. And and stay TV tuned guy. in a, in about another hour uh, for the next appalling news. And it is TV extremely guy. appalling. TV guide. So Bye, you'll Paul. enjoy it. Bye, yeah, six. Is it, TV my is it TV guide? No, it's I'm, no, I've stopped working on it. I, I will. I have to get back to it because he hates me. I, he I'll, I'll show you where I am. Here, here's where I am, just to show you. I'm at Amen. Good show. Yeah, it was a good show. So I am working on it. I mean, and I have to. I'm at Amen. Talk to you later, everyone. Bye, Andre. Bye, Take Tom. Care, Paul. Bye, everyone. Thanks Bye, for Paul. having me. Have a good day.
Bye, Paul. All right, let's see what else you guys are talking about. Uh, we've got DCB Titan who sends in Canadian $5, eh? It says, I think Don Lemon is incredible. I think he means incredibly. Brave, entertaining, and intellectual arena unarmed. I think I'm bumped. sarcastic there. Yeah. <laughs> Master Clockwork sends in $10. Thank you so very much. It says, Elon, if you lowered your standards for doctors, you increase the risk of complications with patients. Don. Are saying black doctors are worse than white doctors, Elon? Huh? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that about sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> Sci Sci-Fi Mombi sends in five dollars. Thank you so much. It says so. Is it safe to say Elon Musk is arrogant, just like Don Lemon? Well, I wouldn't. Yeah, I'm sure he is arrogant, but there's a difference between being arrogant and smart, like Elon Musk, and arrogant and dumb, like Don Lemon. <laughs> Yeah, or put it another way, there's a difference between being arrogant and having reason to be and arrogant without reason to be. I think I being mean, arrogant with a reason to be is confident. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say, like, I... Uh, just to put it this way, uh, between Elon Musk and Don Lemon, which one is the real life Iron Man who builds rockets and sends them into space, builds uh, electrical cars and sell, sells them by the millions all over the world, uh, created a, a, a pay, pay solution, which is a worldwide standard right now, and which was an establishment mouthpiece and got fired for it. Like, there's your discrepancy. All right. Well, then we have uh, Cyrano, who sends in five dollars. Says, "What is the difference between an intellectual discussing discussion or picking a fight?" That's a very nuanced question, there. I guess. I think picking a fight is when you ask a question and it doesn't matter what their answer is, you're going to respond the way that you've already planned on responding. I think the answer you're is lofty. Ugh. <laughs> No, because he's doing exactly what you were about to say there, Six. He goes in predetermined no matter what. Doesn't matter what evidence you present him with. God bless him. Uh, he just sticks to his guns. And I think that's where, yeah, that's the difference there. Probably, you're right. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if yeah. you're sure. Captain's Log is here and says, Stardate, submarine, Andre submarine, with a controller. Yeah, that'd be cool, but submarines, uh, quite a few of them are death machines. Certainly the Eastern European ones or the Russian ones that keep on picking, showing up in Norwegian waters every once in a while, according to the people working on them. Uh, they're at risk every single day because they're both trying to kill them. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. That wouldn't be my first choice of vehicle. Maybe like a big American nuclear submarine. That'd be cool. Or one of the really, really big Russian ones. That would also be cool. But uh, but a tiny little homemade one with a controller, <laughs> like the Titan and stuff. Yeah, I think I take my chances in an, in an, an above water vehicle. Even if it's I was going to say, I don't think I get in anything like If that. I think I would take that one over anything that's... Uh, although... You do have like this ancient human dream of being in a vehicle that goes just below the surface. I'm quite happy to stay above it. Yeah, it's not my ideal situation to be in a <laughs> confined area like that and something that could just compress me to death. Captain Palsy sends in five dollars, says have have to go under the knife for a shunt revision. Ooh. I want I don't want a DI hire. Well, I don't want you to have a DIE hire, as you put it yeah. here, either. No, um, I Captain mean, that's... Halsey. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty heavy procedure right there. So, yeah, I do hope that... Uh, uh, that um, politics hasn't gone far enough yet that there even are any DEI hires that will do that, but only professional well, certified people with a ton of experience. So, best of luck. Because of things like malpractice and such, I got to imagine that they would have to change things so drastically to where these DEI hires wouldn't get sued or the, 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 the oh, yeah, that would be the next sued. thing. Like, Oh no. Uh, if you get to, if you get screwed up uh, because it was a DEI hire, you can't sue because that's racist of you. Oh, that would be perfect. 
See what I well, mean? Like, like to, that's yeah. Go ahead, six, please. I'd like to know how the insurance, com the medical insurance companies are are responding to this. Are I know absolutely nothing about this. So are they obligated to insure someone uh, regardless of their background altogether? Well, you know, how, so how are they deciding who? If it's a I diagnosis, can't, guy, I can't are they less any, to insure them? I, I can't say any any specifics, but I can say as a general thing. If you are qualified, you are qualified, and you get all rights and all provisions that go with it, including insurance, because they don't care if the requirements were result were lowered for you, because their requirement is just that you have the certification, not that you have the certification, and the certification had to be the most difficult one. That's certainly so how if they it get is the degree. In 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 like Scandinavia, where we're, we're in those kind of like various professions and and studies, where you get like a few bonus points for being a a woman specifically because they want more more females. I mean, they did that with uh, with like a, a really high profile study uh, this last year at one of the technical uh, universities. Where they decided that you know what, uh, just for for politicking, we we want more women in this particular course. So this is the entry requirement, and we're going to make it so that all of the female applicants they automatically get like a five point advantage over all of the uh, all of the men. And then that's all that's that's really needed. Then you have like what's required. And I would imagine that's kind of like the same thing there. But we have a comment here from Sci-Fi Mombi who says, uh, I work in the medical insurance field. We have the right to refuse any provider a contract to auto process their medical claims, even if they're licensed certified. Oh, oh, that's good to hear. That's a relief. That's a good relief. That surprises me a little bit because at least from in my experience, if you have the certification, you have it. But uh, if you if you have the right to say no, we don't don't agree with this one, then perfect. Then there may be hope yet. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting to see the the blowback from the insurance companies because you're you're getting people who are a, a diversity um, acceptance into medical school, and then okay, they get the degree. Maybe they went to school in the Caribbean. No shame there. And then there are diversity higher in a, you know, maybe a hospital that's desperate. Uh, they don't pay very much. Their their uh, clinical services are out in BFE where, you know, doctors don't want to work. And so they're, you know, saying, well, we'll pay back a large percentage of your, of your student loans. Um, and then what is, how are, how I'm assuming that insurance companies, they must track the amount of malpractice suits that's that's got to affect just like any other insurance it's going to track the, the screw ups if i'm a driver and i'm i'm a terrible driver my insurance company is going to track that so i'm just i'm interested in the data because i've looked at none of the data involving any of these diversity hires and they talked about it a little bit on the the lemon musk interview but i personally have not looked at any of the data i'm yeah. a data nerd yeah no it's a relatively new thing so yeah, we don't know. Sorry, I had a phone call. Know. Yeah, uh, moving on with the uh, with the uh, super uh, chats here. Uh, we have uh, JWT sixty five seventy seven has been a member for sixteen months, and we thank you. And uh, uh, I'm gonna this one here first nightwish fan 1991 says for ten dollars no drop crosses over one million and to think it was magical society of magical blank that helped him cross over the finish line yeah imagine that that's some i'm sure he would have either time. way but yeah i'm sure that helped yeah, image, yeah. and big daddy mri gifted uh, another 10 10. midnight sentiment oh, it's 20 all together from big daddy yeah uh, and action come wonders for ten dollars. Andre, would you ever take a no frills ride on a container boat to America? There are pricey cruises from Oslo to New York, if that suits you. Then Amtrak to the major cities in the states. Um, 
first of all, uh, if I travel alone without my wife or anything like that, then I do not mind roughing it, uh, roughing it a little bit for a limited time. Uh, I've done that in the past, and I can do that in the future, no problem. A container boat to America, that's many enough days that that might be pushing it. I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd take a container boat for a day, but for a week to America, I think I might want to pay for an upgrade on that one. That just might be worth it. <laughs> yeah, I can, well, I can put up, but there are limits. I, I wouldn't even want to here. walk past a container boat, much less. Uh, <laughs> and to the, he has a question for you as well. Uh, Action comms says, well, culture of the research you, guys. Why. Is there a boat trip from Oslo to New York? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would be too worried about pirates at this point in time because, Arr. you know. Arr. Yeah, not this uh, kind of pirates. Yeah, there, there are so many Somali pirates between uh, in, in the ports between between Norway and uh, and New York. I mean, I wouldn't be so worried them. about that. I, there's also a, kind of a little bit of a wobble going on in the ocean right now, leading to like <laughs> oh, cut cut cables and things like that. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't do that to my friend. Yeah. Problem is that right now it's difficult. Like there's another like a volcano eruption in Iceland, so so who knows how long air traffic is going to go uh, go undisturbed. Indeed, now we got uh, Dark and... Doc Fortune here who sends in two and says, "Did you guys cover Sweet Baby uh, government funding? Um, we we did, did talk about actually, Sweet Baby, but, yes, uh, yeah." Not in this stream, but we have covered it before. If you go on to Midnight Sedge Live Archives, I uh, uploaded a clip where we touch on that subject only yesterday. So um, uh, either the newest or the second newest clip uploaded would be about Sweet Baby Inc.'s government uh, uh, funding right there. Yeah, and you guys did a whole video on, on the whole Sweet Baby Inc. thing like yeah, a week or two ago. Yeah, yeah, I've done a couple. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a rapper until. Uh, no, until that's why I did the videos. I saw this. This ain't no rapper. This thing is gonna be big. Sweet baby. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be one big now, baby. Now I need to make a rapper that's called Sweet Baby. <laughs> uh, Hyperguyber two cents in five dollars says just saw the poster for the acolyte. Possibly the weirdest tampon ad ever. Whoa. Okay, so yeah, even though uh, for the longest time. Uh, supposedly we were told that this was never going to happen. It's happening, kids. Uh, in fact, uh, if I can wait, find we were, it here, Wait, wait, who said this wasn't happening? I'm not getting into that. Nobody credible. Uh, I'm not getting into any of that. Well, well there, there has been a lot of information back and forth, but now it's here. That huh? we can it's, see for certain. Yeah. It's here. And just so he, you can see what he's saying. I apologize for this because I know. Yikes. <laughs> Who okay. fucking okay this? Doesn't don't lightsabers cauterize the wound? Why is Usually, it a I would blood think. stain? That's I look, sometimes people get curious about putting things in places they don't belong. Oh my gosh, culture. <laughs> there's what? some yeah, there's some extreme oh, feminist had energy to go going there. on here. I'll just put it that way. I thought Tom would go <laughs> there, not you, culture. Well, no, nah, I was trying it, to be good. It's all streaked with I mean, come on now. Yeah, there's some clumps in there. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. yeah I can't wait. Go. Trailer dropping tomorrow. Uh, you guys no, going to talk about fake. it on the Night's Edge After Dark? Um, probably. Not if you can help uh, it. Not if I can help it, but I'm sure we'll have to. Uh, we're probably going to have to. We're going to have to review the horrible thing when it comes out. But basically, what we're seeing here, what I think, because... From what I understand, from glancing through some of the comics, uh, the what we're probably seeing in this picture is a lightsaber with a bleeding kyber crystal inside, is my guess that that's kind of like the canon thing of what this is supposed to be. Because the in the comics, the new canon Disney comics, the kyber crystals that power the lightsabers, they're like personal for the owners and stuff like that. And they come in different colors to reflect like the owner's mood or something. And the only way to make them red is to hurt them, to make them bleed. You basically have to, to, to break the heart and to damage the kyber crystal and that's when it turns into the sith red 
And I think kind of you like broke its heart. Here. Yeah. We're seeing a bleeding, bleeding kyber crystal because the Sith came and broke it. And it looks like something that's been inserted into something else and comes out with blood stains outside without having to go into any further details. That's what it looks like. And I do not think that's coincidental. <laughs> and I that's all of the female energy going on on set there. So, yeah. And can Mikey I, says this. Oh, go ahead. Can I read yeah. the official synopsis? Go for it. From Star Wars website. In the Acolyte, an investigation into a shocking crime spree pits a respected Jedi master, played by Lee Jung Jai, against a dangerous warrior from his past, paid, played by Amanda Stenberg. As more clues emerge, they travel down a dark path where sinister forces reveal all is not what it seems. That sounds like the back of a young adult fantasy movie or Pretty book much. from the 90s. Well, well, that is basically what Star Wars has become under um, uh, under uh, Kathleen Kennedy. I mean, the whole new, like, uh, New Republic publishing initiative or Fresh Republic or whatever the hell that thing was called, that print thing. I mean, it was all young adult romance stuff the whole time, wasn't it? What with that stupid rock creature and everything. It, well, come Tell on, you now. didn't watch it. Geode. Geode's, no, Geode's no, my favorite cool. character in Star Wars. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's he's perfect. I mean, you could pick him up and throw him as a weapon. That's, yeah. yeah. He's the best character in all the Star Wars. Yeah. All of the Star Wars. I love all the Star Wars. All the Star Wars. E. Clay Thomason sends in $2 says, excuse me, are those Bugle, bugle Boy <laughs> jeans you're wearing? I remember that. Yes, they are. Yes, they yeah. are. And Design. High Republic was the name of the people. The, the chat helped yeah. me out. Thank you. Yeah, yeah the High Republic is the Get High Republic. Yeah, I should remember yeah. that. DCB Titan sends in another Canadian toonie and says, uh, so this is about a lightsaber fights or tampon tag? Yeah, exactly. Nice. Oh, boy. Well, it's from former uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein assistant Leslie Headland. So what do you expect? First episode's called Red Wings. Are you shitting me? That would be amazing no. if it was. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> are you sure it'd be amazing? Well, no. Are yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure it's not. not. Yeah, you, I, 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 mean, I was gonna say I know exactly <laughs> what he means. Yeah, <laughs> he knows it'll be amazing. He's like, I'm gonna buy a boat. I am. I, do you, I promise you. Starting with tomorrow's trailer, I'm actually going to be working on the thumbnails today, getting ready for this thing. I'm very excited. Bloody lightsaber and all, baby. <laughs> See, I think somebody got confused and thought this was the hilt to something else, and hence poster. Okay, we're going to stop you there because that's enough. Okay. <laughs> we got Morgan King sending in a member chat for 30 months. Holy crap, holy. It's Andre, you should buy a Magalu M5165 private submersible super yacht and use it to travel. That would there be like go. a super villain thing to do, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think that would be a little bit more expensive than buying a full ticket to go to, um, uh, on a cruise ship that goes to the States. I well, mean, you know, we could just set up Midnight's Edge headquarters on a ship then. Yes. Just wherever we port. Fan meet up on the super yacht. Yeah, I mean, that it worked for Eldron Hubbard, so why not? <laughs> <laughs> And on that note, Brian, a.k.a. 70s Rock Fan, who I believe has a stream coming up here in a couple hours, has been a member for 35 months. Thank you for that, where he's going to be talking about uh, the uh, uh, Breaking and Breaking 2 Electric Boogaloo. You forgot the third sequel, Rappin', it sounds like to me, but uh, yeah, lesser known. Uh, but yeah, it sounds like that's what they'll be talking about this afternoon. I might pop in there. We'll see. Um, but yeah, with that, we're caught up. Uh, nice tight Yay. show today. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. To all the mods for all your help and assistance. To Six for helping produce and uh, keep up with things in the background here. It always helps a lot. And uh, Culture and Paul for showing up today. And uh, anything else, Andre? We got Toxic Femme, I believe, later on tonight. Yeah, do check out uh, Toxic Femininity. I might even do some mead radio. Videos tomorrow. Yeah, and I might even do some mead radio. We got yeah. Olaf here who says the acolyte will be Mr. H. Toyota Celica from 19. Oh, that's true. <laughs> you will be able to buy his Celica. Yes, he will get his Celica. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. He's looking forward to that as, as he is. So thank you so much, guys. Andre, as you were saying, uh, maybe a video tomorrow. Um, and uh, yeah, as normal, it's time for what? Some koalas in the rain.
Koalas in the rain. Koalas in the rain. No fucks given. Koala, koala. Koalas in the rain.